All right, everybody, come on in. We are live. It's time for live car Q&A. Come on in and tag a friend. Come on in and tag a friend. Don't just save money by yourself, but tell everybody you know, because people can't save money unless you point them to the things you know. And uh, if you know me, and you are certainly somebody who's committed to saving money. So come on in, get your questions ready. Um, we will be going live. I'm going live on several platforms. So give me a second to get TikTok going, get Instagram going, and um, to get Facebook going and get your questions ready. We're taking questions from all. I see you, church boy. Good to see you. Let's go. See, I like when people are excited about saving money. I like when people are excited about their money, committed to protecting their money. Give me, as you come on in, give me ones in the chat if you are absolutely committed to saving and watching your money, because I am. <laughs> Just starting my lease journey. Okay, I see you. I see you. We're going to talk a lot about that. We'll be on here for about an hour. If you got 10 minutes to spend, well, you, you, you're, on, you're up early. Start posting your questions while I get us um, while I get us up on these other platforms, and um, we'll go from there. All right, we're up on Instagram, we're up on Facebook. Come on in. I love when people are excited about their money because here's the bad part: it's a couple people that are excited about taking your money. So we got to be as excited about learning how to protect our money as those people are about taking our money. Come on in. All right. So it looks like we're live on all platforms. Y'all can see we got TikTok, we got Instagram, we got YouTube, and we got Facebook. Um, come on in. Tag a friend that you care about because... You don't want them to be mad at you when they find out that you've been using these strategies, saving all this money while they've been out here overpaying. All right. Um, okay. Everybody here has audio. Give me clear. Give me clear. The other day I was talking and it was one platform that couldn't hear me. So are we clear on all platforms? Audio is clear. All right. Thank you, Tikia. All right. Hold on. Okay, housekeeping. Some of you know I'm an author. It's my second book, both for five stars. Not available on Amazon, but while we're on this broadcast, my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, you can get it for 75% off. It's in my TikTok bio. It's in my Instagram bio. And I'm going to put a banner up on here on YouTube and Facebook. You guys could go to Deshaun'sBook.com. A, a couple people missed it. They were saying, Deshaun, it shows $97. That means you missed it. Look, $97 is still going to be worth it, but $24 is even better, right? <laughs> Comment dollar signs if, if you like $24 better than $97. Again, <laughs> we care about every dollar. So while we're here, you'll see there's a 30-minute countdown, but start posting your questions. Start posting your questions, and let's get busy. All right. So. First, um, this one's from Facebook. Question, how does the credit being run multiple times for 30 days work? This is a good one, y'all. We call this the bank bidding war. Some of you may not know. I see y'all like running the likes up on TikTok. Keep tapping the screen. Thank you. Some of you may not know that you can let a lot of people run your credit, but you got to do it right. It'll weigh on your credit as one hard inquiry, and you don't do it until after you find your car. Once you find your car, that's when you come home, you call your bank or you go online to your bank, credit union, you go to some online banks like Lightstream, like Community Credit Union, anybody, you could literally Google bank uh, auto loans online. The reason this doesn't work for most people is because those banks need you to have a car. And if you don't have a car, then they can't give you an offer. But at that point, you would have a car. Now, the way the window works is if you do this right, this will take you two days of having all these people run your credit and it'll weigh on your credit as one hard inquiry and you'll guarantee you got the best rate. Once you get the best rate from them, 
you call the dealer who has the car on hold for you and you give them the rate. You say, hey, look, I got 6.99 from such and such. Now you let that dealer go to work and see if any of his or her 10 to 12 banks can beat that rate. Then you snatch your best rate. Works every time. Beautiful. All right, let's go. More questions. I'm going to try to get through as many as I can. This one's TikTok. Hold on. Wait, I don't see one on TikTok yet. Oh, that's because it's too many daggone people on here. Y'all crazy on TikTok. All right. Hold on. Type your questions, TikTok. Let's go to Instagram. Um, hold on. Is that a picture of Lucille Ball? We talking about cars. Yes, it's a picture of Lucille Ball, though. Yes, it is. <laughs> All right, hold on. Type your questions, y'all. I see people just want to tune in and hear other people. And here's what I'll tell y'all about these lives. Someone's going to ask the same question as you. So if you stay on long enough, you're going to say, oh, that's the same question I wanted to ask. All right, let's keep it going, though. After getting pre-approved from my local... Oh, type your question in one comment. We can't do continuations. All right, uh... Omar, when you say you let the dealer go to work for the best race, that means their lenders will run your credit, too. That's absolutely right, Omar. Absolutely right. You can let all these people run your credit. And at the end of the window, when it closes, you'll see the effects of uh, on your credit score is the same as one hard inquiry. That's called rate shopping. OK, if you do it like I just told you to do it. Every time it works. And not only that, you'll see how many the rates on these from these banks and credit unions are different. You need to guarantee you got the best one. That means you guaranteed you paid the lowest, least amount of interest. All right. I got my book. All right. Enjoy it. And make sure you send me your success story. Please make sure you tell me your. Hold on. I got to make this print bigger because I cannot see y'all on TikTok. Then in uh, December and January, best time to buy a car. There's no best time to buy a car. Best time to buy a car is the worst time to buy a car is when you need one. But as long as you're getting multiple offers, that's okay. You might say, Deshaun, I only got three days. You must learn, get multiple offers. Get multiple offers. But the there is no best time. Here's why. What y'all have been, see, there's people who programmed you to think that there's a best time. Why? So they can load the dealerships up. If, if, if Imagine having a business, right, where decades and decades of marketing trained your customers to come in at a certain time. Wouldn't that be a good business? Like, imagine you own a, 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 a pizza shop and just the history of pizza shop teaches people, come on in at the end. You know every month at the end of the month, you're getting a ton of customers. Mm -mm. It's a marketing ploy. On top of that, dealers make the best deals when they're desperate. And that's not to say they're desperate like we're going out of business. That's to say, hey, I'm trying to hit my numbers or, hey, you know what? I haven't sold a car this week or, hey, there's nobody that came into the dealership today. Or we've had a dead week. That typically happens first, second week of the month. So if you're trying to predict this and say, oh, I'm going to wait for the end. Mm -mm. Some people say, oh, well, dealers are trying to make their numbers. Just so you all know, it's just it's not a magical thing. Every, every dealer doesn't wait to the end of the month to hit their numbers. It's marketing. So you take like out of all the dealers, everybody just magically doesn't hit their numbers until the last day of the month. No, it's not the way it works. It's marketing. And that dealer that is that gets your inquiry, gets your phone call, gets your email, and on the twelfth of the month, and they look around and they see they haven't sold a car. Oh, they want that. Listen, <laughs> anything that we could do to sell a car, we're gonna do because we are way behind. There's deal the the most dealers they track to hit their numbers. They don't wait till the end. They can see, yo, we need to make sure we're doing enough deals on the 10th of the month to be tracking to hit our numbers. So that end of the month stuff, don't believe it. <laughs> you might make your best deal on the 13th of the month, <laughs> but always get multiple offers. That's how we guarantee the best deal. All right. Uh, best time is right now. <laughs> let's get a you shout out. All right, let's go. Uh, what's the best way to negotiate a trade in? Great question. Don't trade. I want here's the word that I want y'all to eliminate from your vocabulary. OK, trade. Let me ask you a question. When have you gotten the most money something was worth trading it? Honestly. When have you gotten the most money something is worth trading it? Never. Right. Like if you say, hey, I'll trade you my bike for your. Whatever your lawnmower. Are you getting the most money you could get for the bike? No. 
Trade always means I'm leaving a little money on the table. So here's how you don't do that. You're going to do something I call an equity assessment. My book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. So if you hate car shopping, just type, type a H. We don't have to type the word hate, a lot of energy there. But we know it's people that hate car shopping. We ain't got to sugarcoat that. It, the book is called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, Seven Steps to Saving Time, Money, and Avoiding Dealership. Now, this seven-step system is an A to Z, and it's a step-by-step, -step, and it's a certain order. Now, step two is when we do the equity assessment. This is going to tell us if we have positive equity or negative equity. This is going to tell us if you have a lease, be honest, who didn't know that you could sell a lease? Type a question mark. If you did not know that you could sell a lease, type a question mark. This is the equity assessment process. So it looks different depending on if you're leasing versus, versus if you own. The equity assessment is where you call your bank and you find out your payoff. That's the amount you owe. Now, once you find out how much you owe, you're then going to go to the online buyers and get cash offers. These are people who pay the most for cars. Everything you're going to do from now on, if you do it my way, is going to be a bidding system. Bids make sure you never overpay. Bids make sure you pay the least no matter what. You get the lowest offer in the market. You're going to go to the online car buyers, CarMax, Driveway, uh, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer, not kellysbluebook.com, because you're, the benefit we have with cars is we can get cash offers. We don't depend on an algorithm to tell us what our car is worth, and then they send you into the dealership to try to fight for it. Here, Terrence, your car is worth 18000 Now go fight for it. Mm-mm. Bids. Terrence, your car, we're willing to pay you 18200 Hey, CarMax, we're willing to pay you 19100 When you, That's a huge advantage we have with cars that we don't have with houses. So that's the start. That's what you want to do to start. If you're like Deshaun, who has a car right now that they're thinking about getting out of, that you owe money on? If it's paid off, even better, because you could get all those offers there's no loan. Whatever it's worth is cash in your pocket. But if you have a car now and you're thinking about getting out, okay, I see you, Kimberly. Here's what you do. The first thing you do is the equity assessment because you need to find out what your position is in that car. Are you in a positive equity position or are you in a negative equity position? We can't do anything until we find out what we're going to do from there, okay? So for all of you who just joined, or everything you're going to see, look, here's my philosophy, y'all. Y'all see I make these social media videos. Thank God. I appreciate y'all sharing, watching. We up to over 2 million followers. We got 1.5 million on TikTok. We have to 300,000. We just hit 300,000 yesterday on Facebook. We just hit uh, 280,000 on Instagram, and we're like 140,000 subscribers on YouTube. So I can't see your DMs. The best thing for y'all to do is just watch my free videos. I don't hold back or come to these lives. Or if you like to shine, what's the quickest way I could get everything and I don't have to worry about wasting time. You could go get my new digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping in my TikTok bio. You won't need a broadcast. Just click the picture of me, click that link. And for the next 30 minutes, it's 75% off. That's part of my launch. I didn't want to just launch it full price. We're launching 75% off. And you can type... If you if you go to goodreads.com, you'll see we're already rated 4.94. That's great. So, all right, let's go. Keep the questions coming. If I bought an extended warranty, this one's from TikTok. We're going we're going to rotate through all the platforms. So just keep the questions coming. If I bought an extended warranty, that does that come off my payoff amount if I don't use it? Great question. Some of you may have that question. Kenny bought an extended warranty. He's asking. Will that come when he calls to find out how much he owes? Will that come off his payoff? Now, probably not if you built it into the loan. But here's what you can do. You can call the extended warranty company 
if you haven't filed the claim and if you haven't used it, then you can cancel it. They'll charge you a small cancellation fee, usually very small, and then you can get a refund for the unused portion. You could do that with extended warranties. You can do that with tire and wheel warranties. As long as you haven't filed a bunch of claims that have exceeded the, the value, uh, the amount you paid. All right. So anything you haven't used, you are entitled to a uh, prorated refund. OK, let's go. Uh, can I sell a finance vehicle? Great question. Teresa, that's a great question. This one's from Facebook. I used to have people when I was at this. Some, some of you know that I worked for Mercedes Benz for uh, five years. I worked with General Motors for five years. I would have people that would walk in and say, all right, Deshaun, is that the new one? And I'm like, yeah, that's the 20 whatever. He's like, all right, I got four payments left, and then I'm coming in, and I'm going to get, um, I want to talk to you about that. That's a person who thought that they had to pay off their car before they could get a new one. You don't have to, y'all. You can actually replace your car, and, and here's what I want you to know. If you're in the business of changing cars, and you're not keeping them eight years, you're overspending because you're not shopping for aggressive lease deals i know some of you that just made you that just sent a little like you know you you got a little anxious there because you were taught for years be honest who was taught never lease a car who was taught never lease a car i'm the guy who's look my favorite subject in school was math i'm a math person i don't get into the emotions I've done the math, not to mention I've been in the business for 14 years. Leasing is for people who don't keep their cars eight years. Here's why. You, here's the value of your car. You see the way my arm is? That's the value of your car the first six to seven years. It's going down. It's really like this. It's going down. But. There's a point in time where you keep it long enough and it starts to go like this. Who has a car outside that they've had in their driveway for at least nine to, or 10 years? In a, a car outside that you've had for at least nine or 10 years? Who has, okay, I see you, Heli. Okay, I see you, Beauty. Everybody who has a car outside that you've had in your driveway for at least nine or 10 years. Look, look, essentially Yvonne said 13 years. Okay, 12 years, Tony. Okay, look, car I'm driving now, 16 years. All right, check this out. This is the depreciation curve. This is why those of you who are not keeping eight years, you don't realize you're not a long-term person. That's short-term. And you're losing the most value in that period of time, but then it cools off. Y'all notice anybody who's had a car outside for 19 years, the value of that car is about the same as it was a year ago, right? Value hasn't changed much, right? That's because you outlive the depreciation. That's where you want to get to when you're purchasing. Now, some of you are like, Deshaun, I'm not keeping a car that long. Then you should be shopping for aggressive lease deals. If you're not, and, and when I say aggressive lease deals, ignore commercials. When you see Deshaun, the car I want, it says I could lease, but I need all this money down. Nope. You could get any car with no money down as long as you have the credit. And even some of you who credit is not perfect, you can get most cars with no money down. The only two people that can't get no money down cars is if your credit is too bad right now or if you're trying to borrow too much. So you might have a lot of negative equity and you're trying to transfer it. The bank won't approve it because it, it blows out the loan of value. But you have to know if you are not buying your cars to keep and outlive that depreciation, you've lost money. And, I, and, and I'm the person who's going to tell you it's time to stop. I don't care what you were taught. If you spend enough time with me, I'll prove it to you. But that's just the facts. We have people that are driving leases and some people say, and then keep the questions coming. Some people say, oh, leasing is renting. That's ridiculous. Renting a car is hundreds of dollars per day in most cases. Leasing a car is pennies on the dollar compared to purchasing when you get a great lease deal. Like this is uh, Greg. Greg, he used our system, seven steps. He got a Kia 
SUV, $56,000 SUV, that would normally be about $1,200, that'd be about $1,100 a month. Every $5,000, y'all know, is about 100 bucks a month. If you've seen my videos, or if you've been on here, he's paying $567. It, uh, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put it up on here. If you're on YouTube, you can see this. If you're on Facebook, you can see this. This is Greg's lease. He's paying five. I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I'm wrong, y'all. Five twenty-seven. So he got the seventy-five hundred dollar electric car rebate. Plus he got a discount from the dealer, and he got a shopping online. What I'm telling y'all is, if you're not leasing and you're not keeping your cars eight years, you're losing tons of money. And so let's stop it, okay? And any questions y'all want to ask me about that, feel free. But we got to break this old bad advice that we've been listening to from people who don't know what they're talking about when it comes to cars. All right, let's go. Uh, what about a 650 score? Can I lease? Lucas, if you got a good profile, if you got a good, see, what I always say, y'all, it's not just about scores, profile. If you have a paid car, if you have a car payment you've been paying and it's been on time the last two years, that's a real good indicator. Even if you have uh, some things that are not perfect, the bank looks at, do they pay their car? And especially, I remember when I was with Mercedes, we'd have people, people would call me and say, Deshaun, my credit's not where it was when I leased my last Mercedes or when I got my last one. You think they'll approve me? I said, listen, how'd you pay the car? Oh, I never missed the payment. They're going to approve you. <laughs> That's just the way Mercedes was. But many banks look at that. So even if things are, even if you're not a 700, 750, 800, if you've paid your car on time the last couple of years, you're usually good. And that's a profile thing, not just a score thing. Now, what I tell you all, go follow Shonda Martin, use her credit stuff and get your credit score up because she's just a genius. Shonda Martin, she's on all these platforms. Get your credit up. Um, but if you're not ready to lease, then get ready to lease. If I, if I couldn't qualify for a lease, the only thing I would be doing is trying to set myself up to qualify for a lease because I'm not a long term person. I appreciate it. Thanks for the gifts on TikTok. I appreciate everybody. All right. Going to a dealer now. This one's from Facebook. Recycling all through questions. All right. And if you've visited that site and you saw that timer start from my book, this is the official release of my digital book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. Once that timer is at zero, it's 75 percent off for our launch. I wanted to make sure that I gave, I don't want any excuse. If you're, if you're like Deshaun, I know what you, you, you sound like you know what you're talking about. I want everything you teach in one spot, step by step, then go get the book for 75% off. It'll be in your inbox. And some people said, Deshaun, is, do you print a book? I didn't want to print a book because things change too fast in this industry. I'm teaching y'all how to car shop from home online and stay in control. We're using specific websites. You're using specific scripts that I wrote. Anything that I change, if you bought a book from me, yeah, it'll work today. But then when you, when you, you, your family member's ready to use it six months from now, something changes, and you're like, Deshaun, this is this website doesn't work anymore. So with a with a digital book, I update that thing, and you'll have free updates. So anytime you open it, you can open it a year from now. It's going to be relevant. So you get updates with a digital book that I can't do with a uh, with a print book. So go grab your copy. Let's keep the questions coming. Okay. Um, Shonda Martin is the real deal. Yes, she is. Uh, hold on. You got to type your questions all in one shot. We can't do broken up questions. Um, oh, I see your book. Thank you. Enjoy it. Uh, hey, I'm just joining. Can you help personally lead? I don't know what that means. Uh, Type all your questions in a complete thing. Should I lease if I drive 20,000 miles per month? That's a great question. Super high mileage driving. Now, did you mean 20,000 per month or did you mean 20,000 per year? Just type month or year so I could be clear before I answer this. 20,000 per month or 20,000 per year? Let me know because this is a good question either way per month. Okay. No, you shouldn't. Anybody who's on here, if you're doing, if you're doing Uber, Lyft, or anything where the goal, the more successful you are, the more mileage you put on the car. Here's what I mean by that. If I did 20,000 miles this year, I might've did okay doing Uber. 
if I did 40,000 miles this year, I might, and now you might have a, you might have a fleet of vehicles. You might be doing Toro. The thing is, the goal is the more mileage that's on that car, the better year we have. Does that make sense? Type a dollar sign if you understand. Then you don't want to lease because you can't predict the mileage. So what you want to do here is what's very important for you to understand, y'all, because nobody loses money like you guys. Because you take five or six year loans, which give you a lower payment, but then you depreciate. Remember that depreciate? Look. So check this out. If that depreciation curve looks like this for multiple, for most people on here, it goes down like this. Here's your depreciation curve, driving 20,000 a month, destroying the value of the vehicle very quickly. Now, here's what you can't do. You can't say I'm going to destroy the value of the vehicle, but my loan is going to be the same length as a person who drives normal miles. What you end up doing is you come back to replace your car and you have $15,000 of negative equity. So you, what you've done from a business standpoint, you just pushed all your losses to the back. So during the months, it looks good. You're like, oh, we may had a good month. We're making money every month. But then when you go to replace the car, here comes all the losses. So what you do is you adjust your loan so that you have to ask yourself this. Everybody on here you're now, you're going to start treating car buying with a little bit more longer view. See, that's why that depreciation curve, that eight-year outlook is going to be your anchor for leasing versus buying. If you are buying a car and you're going to put super high miles on it for a business, you got to ask yourself, when do I want to replace the car? So if you're doing 20000 a month, you're talking 120000 a year, you ask yourself, when am I going to replace it? You might say, I'm going to replace it in two years. You might say, I'm going to replace it in three years. That's what your loan should be. Whenever you say, I'm going to replace it, that's the loan you take. Now, yes, the monthly payment's a little bit higher, but here's what you're going to do. No negative equity. So don't be penny wise. It's called penny wise dollar foolish. I'm going to make 150 extra dollars per month, but then my negative equity is at the end. No, I'll pay the extra in a shorter loan. And then when I go and switch my cars, I got no baggage. In fact, even if my car has 300,000 miles, it's still worth a little something. So I might get $3,000. I could use that as a, as, a, as a down payment or I sell it, put it in my bank account. That's what you do. High mileage drivers, if you do that and super high mileage, I'm not talking about people who drive 20,000, 30,000 per year. That brother said he drives 20,000 a month. When you're doing Uber, all of that stuff, you got to have a specific strategy. And that's the one. Use that. All right. Let's keep it coming. Uh, Larry, new subscriber here. Welcome. Welcome to the family. Appreciate you. How to understand the final paperwork, those pink and yellow forms. It feels like the numbers be manipulated can make a line of by line video. Any good advice on who to buy? Okay. Ask one question at a time. If you've shopped from home, then those numbers where you, you, what I teach you is to shop from home. So the numbers that, that you're seeing should match what you've agreed to by email. When you're talking to a dealer, you're always asking them, and this is all in my book. Everything I teach you is in my book. You can have it in one spot. It's also in my free videos. If you want to look through 30, 40 videos and try to find the ones that work for you, do it. God bless you. But every number that you talked about with a person by phone or by email should match the, the, the contract. So, But if you're negotiating inside dealers, it's going to be hard for you to see. That's why here's the rule of thumb, y'all. Never talk numbers inside a dealership. Y'all remember that? You never talk numbers inside a dealership. You figure out what you want. If you're shopping for a used car, you should be shopping online. You should know you have a deal before you ever visit that dealership. And if you are shopping for a brand new car or a lease, then you should know you have a deal before you ever visit that dealership. Okay? This is important. Let, let other people with no strategy waste their time. You move different. Okay? In order to do, if you want different results, you want to pay less than everyone, you have to move different than most people are moving. Okay? Let's go. Keep the questions coming in. Sorry, I wrote that wrong. Do you offer one-on-one -on -one help with leasing or is everything in your book? Everything's in the book. You want to lease? It's in there. You want to sell your lease? I asked a couple minutes ago who didn't know they could sell a lease. A lot of you said, oh, I didn't know that. 
Um, some people said I didn't know I could sell a car if I still had. You know, some people were taught, yo, you got to wait for that title to come in. No, you don't. And uh, so some people say, Deshaun, I figured out I should be leasing. Should I wait until I pay off my car and then switch to a lease? Nope. There's no benefit. You get out of that structure, get into a structure that works for you. And the le if you're not keeping your car eight years, then you should be in a lease. As I said a little while ago, if you can't qualify for a lease, you should be setting yourself up to qualify for a lease. Because when you see these cars you drive, when you get good leases, you're going to be like, Dag, I should have been doing this 10, 15 years ago. <laughs> All right. Only if you're short term, if you're not keeping eight years. All right. Let's go. Keep them coming. Let's go to Instagram. Let's go. Keep typing your questions. Can you get a good deal without a down payment? Oh, good question. Type a dollar sign if you like that question. She said, can you get a good deal without a down payment? 100%. In fact, I would tell you guys that when they work your deals for you, they're actually adding a down payment so that you can't really focus on the price you're paying for the car. That's what they're doing in most cases. That's why everything you'll learn from me is you always shop your offers with no money down. You can put money down, but in order for you to clearly see what someone's offering you, you have to see it with no money down. See, see, when you put 10 grand down, it mixes things up. You're not really focused on what you paid for the car. How much discount did you give me? You're not focused on that. When you, every from now on, what you're going to do is you're going to shop every offer, whether you're purchasing, leasing, it's all going to start with no money down. And here's what we decide. Once we get our deals and we look at them and we say, OK, I shopped all my offers. I'm picking this one. This is the best. Y'all going to learn that I teach a bidding system. When it, it, This is how you get great deals if you're not a good negotiator. Be honest. Who's not a good negotiator on here? You just be honest. You just you don't like confrontation. Maybe you're an introvert. Maybe you're just like, you know, it's just not my thing. If you are not a good negotiator, what I'm about to tell you is going to be what empowers you. OK, so lots of you not a good negotiator. When you start making people negotiate with each other, which is called a bid, you don't have to be. You're going to save more money than those who are going in to negotiate. I'll give you an example. When you walk into the grocery store, you say, I need some spaghetti sauce. How many brands are competing? Lots of them, right? If you wanted to buy a TV, I guarantee I could tell any of you on here, hey, I need an 80-inch TV. Nobody on here is going to overpay. Why? Because you you already know what you're going to do. I'm going to look at this website. I'm going to look at this website. Nobody on here is going to walk into a one store and say, all right, what's your price on an 80 inch TV? 1500. What? Well, come on. Could you do 13? This is at 1500. That sounds kind of high. No. We do the same thing with cars. We sit at home. We get multiple offers. People bid. And when people bid, this is how you get the best deals when you're a horrible negotiator. You'll be sitting at home, Not these people don't even know, but you're seeing so many offers and these dealers are actually competing with each other. So we get off everything. That's how we get everything. That's how we get, we do it for our loans. We talked about the bank bidding war earlier. We do it with a car we buy and we do it with a car we sell. We When we sell our leases, always a bid, always get multiple offers, okay? That is what I teach. It's not, this isn't like, oh, I hope this will work. That's like saying, oh, I hope looking online for the for that 80 inch TV will work. No, it's just what you, what you what they programmed you to do is walk into one store that going um, <laughs> uh, they programmed you to walk into, you know, Schneider Electric who sells TVs and say, hey, you got an 80 inch. All right. 50, and go back and forth with Schneider. No, you come home and you look at all the people who have 80 inches. And you're like, so y'all see what I'm saying? 
It's the way you've been taught and the way they taught you benefited them. If I could keep you just talking to me, hey, no, nah, don't go. How many people you felt it, right? The dealer doesn't want to let you leave. You're like, hey, you know what? Let me go think about, hey, listen, what can I do? Can I, what if I take off this? What if I take off? What the goal is, is don't leave. Because the worst thing that I can let you do is look at some other prices. And then you're going to realize how overpriced I was. So that's what it is. That's my son. And, and the seven steps I teach in my digital book, that's what it's all about. Mastering the, art, mastering the science of shopping multiple offers. Works for everybody. Uh, look, I'm a coupon. I never pay regular price. <laughs> I like saving money. Listen, anybody who likes saving money, you, you, you me and you are going to get along, <laughs> you know? Can, um, so yes, you, every deal, this goes back to the question, could you get a good deal without a down payment? You are shopping all your offers with no money down. And then here's what down payment is, y'all. Payment management. This is all in my book. If you want it at 75% off, it's only 75% off for 30 minutes. Once that timer goes down, you click the website in my TikTok bio, you'll see that timer. If it goes down to zero, it's $97. I want, I, I, listen, if you care about your money, 24 is better than 97. So that's what down payments are payment management. They don't get you a deal. So when you look at your payment and you're like, man, this person really is giving me a great deal on this car. They took off a lot of money. They beat everybody else. But the payment's a little higher than I like. That's when we apply down payments. That's the only purpose. That's it. So when you say get good lease offers with first month's payment, taxes and fees included, are those totals, this one's from YouTube, are those totals or are those fees spread over the life of the lease? So we always get our lease offers with only first month's payment. And here's the thing. There's a word that I want y'all to, another word. It's a couple words that we're going to. Who remembers the first word that we're eliminating? Let's see who was with us from the beginning of the broadcast. And then y'all could actually tell the people who didn't get. Who remembers the first word we eliminate from our vocabulary? I don't want y'all to use it ever again. We talked about this early in the in the live today. Oh, Miss Lady T, the click that picture of me and then you'll see a website there. Go to that. That's my website. You'll see a button that says get my new book 75% off. Click that. You can grab the book and you won't leave the broadcast. Instagram, you will leave the broadcast for two minutes, three minutes while you get the book, but then come on back and, you know, we can. Yes, you got it, Spiceberg. Trade. Trade. Spice Beige, my fault. Send me a DM. I like that you're paying attention. Send me a DM here on TikTok. I'm going to give you a free copy. I'm going to give you a free copy because you're locked in. And I just love people that are locked in. So send me a, send me a DM. And uh, matter of fact, Miss Lady JJ, she actually said it before you. Both of y'all, send me a DM. I'll give you both a copy. Um, trade. Because we get bids. You can't trade a car and get bids. So the second word we're going to eliminate from our from our um, from our vocabulary is down payment, money down. We're going to start using terms like total out of pocket. Here's why. Who's ever had? Who's ever told a dealer? I want to put two thousand down or a thousand down, and then when you go in to do the paperwork or when you later on. They ask you about, well, what about the taxes? Are you going to pay those up front? Yada, yada. And sometimes they'll let you go all into the finance office. You think, all right, I'm about that. We got the deal done. It's 2000 down, 470 a month. And you're walking into the finance office and then they're like, okay, so how are you going to pay the taxes? Right? That is because our language wasn't clear enough. When we want to start using the term total out of pocket. So when we're shopping for our leases, we are always telling the dealer first month's total out of pocket. That's how you give me the offer. And then at all the taxes, all the fees, you put that into the monthly payment. Then I could judge the lease offer. I'm going to see, is it a 1% lease, which is a steal? You're not going to get a 1% lease usually without bids. So, you know, you're not going to get the best price without bids. But if it's a 1% lease, it's a steal. 
That means your monthly payment is 1% of the MSRP or less. If it's between 1% and 1.5, that's a good deal. That's great value. You're paying pennies on it. You're driving cars for thousands less than people who are buying them. You got a quality deal. Great deal. Get it up out of there. If it's over 1.5%, we say no to those. That's a bad lease program. There are some bad lease programs and there's people. See, you know who bad lease programs were made for? When the dealer calls Mr. Johnson, who's so loyal, he doesn't realize the money that he's paying. Hey, Mr. Johnson, come on. Hey, it's Charlie over here at uh, such and such, uh, you know, Subaru. Listen, um, Mr. Johnson, I, I can get you out of your lease early. Who has dealers saying, hey, call, I'll get you out of your lease early. This is how those conversations go sometimes. Um, thing about it is, you know, the payment goes up a little bit, uh, but you know, you, and bro, they do this a lot with luxury vehicles because they cater to ego. You know, come on, you've been driving this car for how many Subarus have you had? Five? I mean, you can't, you, you know, you can't switch, you know, that's what they're basically saying. All through the pandemic, those were the calls you were getting, you know, Payment went up $150, $200, $300, but come on, you always drove a Mercedes. So they didn't realize that the price I'm paying for my lease is too much. Which means, what is? how do we know it's too much, Deshaun? You know it's too much because you're paying too much for a car you're giving back to them in three years. When you add up all the payments, you'll see, Dad, the car was $40,000. I paid $27,000. You pay too much for a vehicle you're giving back, which eliminated the benefit of leasing. So that's that's how we do it. First month's payment, total out of pocket, and all the fees go into the lease. That's how we get our lease offers. All right, my question is too long to put in the comment section. Uh, go over to YouTube. Um, if you if you got YouTube, type into Sean Autoviler, join the live over here, or Facebook. You can type longer questions. All right, let's go. So that one was from Instagram. Let's keep the questions coming. Uh, what about luxury brands? Which is a good percentage? Doesn't change. Doesn't change. I don't care if you're buying exotic Ferrari percentages don't change. That's the good thing about principles, percentages, boundaries. These things are rules. Doesn't matter. You can put a Bentley in there. Like, look, if you're on Facebook or Instagram, um, or if you're watching this rebroadcast, look, I'm sure you Kimberly. Kimberly got a Maserati. She saved twenty thousand dollars. She got a lease. Her lease, just to give you what her lease deal is, her Maserati was ninety one thousand seven hundred sixty one dollars. That was the MSRP. Look, down payment, and this is in our private Facebook group because I not only do I have the book, but I have a video library, and then I coach a couple people who got the video library. Well, look, ninety one thousand seven hundred sixty one dollars. Look, down payment, first month only. Nine forty four. So she's driving a $91,000 vehicle for $944. That vehicle normally, there are people who have that exact same car she's driving and they're paying every $5,000 is $100 a month. They're paying $1,800 for it. So this is, I forgot how I asked. I, I forgot what question I was in. I know that was the answer. But I just forgot. It's so many questions popping up. That was the. Um, oh, no. yes, it was about what about luxury brands? So that was the point. Doesn't matter. The principles that I'm teaching you are going to apply no matter what you're buying, leasing, buying a used car, buying a new car, high mileage driver. You just want to move with strategy and, and you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. Let's go back to. Let's go. We're cycling through all the platforms. So we own four platforms. So keep the questions coming and we're going to get through as many of them as we possibly can. Let me put this banner back up for those of you who want your 75% off. Some of you like Deshaun. I love the live, but I, I, I want everything in one spot. Let me get this book. All right. Hold on. Let me put my banner. Let me get rid of the comment. OK. Is there a difference between a personal loan and an auto loan? Definitely. Yeah, the terms are usually different. A personal loan is usually going to come with a higher interest rate than an auto loan in most cases. Not all, but in most cases. Uh, for Facebook viewers, how do we pay for the book? 
Uh, let me put a comment here for you. Let me know if y'all can click this because sometimes Facebook does have issues getting seeing it. Let me know if y'all can click that link right here that says Deshaun's book. I just posted the comment. Let me know if y'all can see that. I don't know why it just went to TikTok. Let me post it here to face. I mean, it just went to YouTube. See if you can click that link that says Deshaun's book. If you can, give me the give me the give me the uh give me the clearance that y'all can. Okay, just purchased the book. I'm ready to learn. Thank you, Adrian. Enjoy it, use it, and please report to me your success stories. All right, it's in there. It's everything, everything you need step by step. Okay, how do you trade in? I have a 2016 Versa. I'm trying to trade it in, zero down. What do you suggest? Okay, so 2016, if you're going to keep your next car eight years, we talked about that earlier, you need to outlive depreciation, you're purchasing. If you're not keeping eight years, then you should be shopping for an aggressive lease. Now, first thing we do when we want to replace our car is equity assessment. Equity assessment. Find out what you owe, call your bank, get your payoff, and then go to the online car buyers. CarMax, Driveway, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer, Carvana, um, AutoNation Sell My Car, Car Guru Sell My Car. That's a bid. That's six offers. As more companies come out, we'll add them to the bid. But the more, the better. That six offers, you get it in about 20, 25 minutes. That's going to tell you your equity position. That's the first thing you do. Once you know your equity position, you know whether, you know, you know, am I making money selling my car or do I have negative equity? You need, that's the first step. Well, actually the first step is how many years are you going to keep the next car? The first step is always the leasing versus buying decision because that's the foundation. First step is always leasing versus buying. If you get my book, everything you'll see. When you get to step one, you'll see the most important question. That's where we start out. How many years are you keeping the next car? Because it, it, because what you're going to learn is I have to plan for depreciation. If I'm keeping my car long enough to outlive depreciation, be like the people we talked about earlier who said, man, I had my car 16 years. I had my car 12 years, 10 years. They have outlived depreciation. It's not about payment. It's not about, is my car paid off? I paid cash for my cars. That's not about that. Your expense you don't see is the one you have to plan for, depreciation. So once you outlive depreciation, that, that, if your goal is to outlive that 8, 10, 12 years, that's when we purchase. So that's the most important question. That's the first question. After you answer that question, then you move to the equity assessment if you have a car to replace. Okay? You got to do the equity assessment because that's going to determine your next move. If you got a bunch of negative equity, then you have to move accordingly. I have that in my book. Some of you going to have negative equity because you've been buying cars when you should have been leasing. So we have to deal with that. If you have a little bit of negative equity, that we have to deal with that. If you have positive equity, well, that either is going to go in your bank account or it could be it could go towards your next car purchase. So we must do equity assessment before anything. Leasing is much cheaper than buying. When you know how to get great leases, Smokey, you're absolutely right. And he said, I'll never buy a car again. Leasing, when you know how to get great lease deals, because some people, look, that's why I made up. That's why I had to create the 1.5% rule, because there was no rule for when people were overpaying for their lease deal, in which I, I don't even like to, I don't like to use the word overpaying and deal in the same sentence, because it's not a deal. So, but, but. When I created the 1.5% rule, a lot of people realized that they didn't get a good lease deal. But if you know how to get a good one, which is what I'm teaching, multiple offers, bids, oh, there's no, oh, the, you, when you see what you drive for what you pay, it, it, it's hard to do anything else. But again, if you're keeping your cars 8, 10, 12 years, then you should not be looking to lease. You should be shopping for your most aggressive purchase. Okay, uh, the link worked on Facebook. Got the book. Congratulations, Tony. Enjoy it. Use it. And please, uh, and also, you'll see we're already almost five. I, I hate to say we're almost five stars. Nobody's going to, I don't think you can get a lot of reviews and be all the way five stars. But we're, we so far, we've gotten 20, 31 rating. We're 4.94 on Goodreads.com. So uh, I'm very grateful for those of you who have rated the book, reviewed the book. Um, I'm very grateful for that. All right, let's keep it going. This one's YouTube. I'm going to wait to purchase your book, but I appreciate these live videos. They're helping me. Uh, 
do what you feel is best. You it's 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 24 hours. Well, listen, you do what you feel is best. Uh, what about the mile restriction on the lease if you drive a lot? How do you shop for leases on that scene? So if you drive a lot, here's what you do. You always shop your offers with 12,000 miles per year. Now, some of you may have been taught they limit you on lease mileage. Who, who, who was told that, oh, you could only get 10,000 miles per year on a lease? That, was, that wasn't true. More bad information. You choose your mileage on a lease. You choose your mileage on a lease. So if you're driving eighty, uh, if you're driving fifteen thousand miles per year, that is what you're going to get. You're not. You do not sign if you want to. When you see people that don't like leasing, it's usually for one of two reasons: they pick the wrong mileage, or they beat. They were very very hard on their car and surprised when they got a bill. See, because another myth that they told you is when you lease, it has to be perfect. And I want to put some good, get some questions in here about used cars. We want to we ask some questions about purchasing. It's just leasing is why are people so interested in leasing? Because it's the subject that they have known the least about. So that's the reason why we get on these lives. And there's so many questions about leasing because it's been an unknown subject for so long and so many, so much bad information. But when you are, um, when you're choosing your mileage, you you always want to shop your offers with 12,000 miles per year so that you can judge the offers. But then when you when you when you find the dealer that wins the bid, they beat everybody else. Then you adjust the mileage with them one on one. You tell them I'm ready to do business with you. Can you adjust the lease to a 15,000 mile a year lease? Can you adjust it to 18000 and show me what it is? Because at that point, you've gotten the biggest discount from them and you can trust them when they adjust the mileage. They're not going to blow the deal because they've already worked hard to beat their competition. So then you adjust the mileage and, and you'll see what it is. So that's how you do. Shop with this. Shop with 12. Find the Identify the winning dealer. And then have them adjust the mileage to what you need. And some of you may adjust down. You might go to 10. Like you saw Kimberly, her lease was 10,000 on hers. Some of you have a, you know, you might want to do a low mileage lease, 7,500. Not everyone offers 7,500, but some brands do. But you always shop with 12. Uh, why do they want to, why do they want to raise your payment according to the mileage? Uh, Victoria, because you're depreciating the car more. Listen, with a car, you're paying for depreciation. If you own the car and you drove it, all right, if you, let's say you own a car, you sit it in your driveway for a year, is it worth what it's worth today, a year from now? Even if you don't drive it, you don't drive it one mile. Is it worth what it's worth today, a year from now? No. Now, let's say you drive it 10,000 miles. Isn't it? It's worth less, right? It's worth less if you drive it 10,000 miles. Let's say you drive it 20,000 miles. It's worth less, right? But you but 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 you own it. Doesn't matter. See what I'm saying? The lies that have been taught to you is you don't pay for your mileage because you own your car. That information is garbage. Not only is, is that information garbage, it's expensive. That's expensive information that you've been taught to believe. So when you lease, you pay for your mileage. When you own, you pay for your mileage. But for the short-term person who's not keeping their car eight years, shopping for an aggressive lease deal is a hedge against depreciation. You're gonna pay less for the mileage with an aggressive lease deal than you will as an owner. That's it. It's beautiful. And when you get this and start putting it into action, you're going to see. And then the first thing you're going to want to do is tell your family, tell your friend. Somebody on the live earlier was like, listen, I had a conversation with my family. They, they, was, they, was, they started barking at me when I started talking, but when I showed them the numbers, it was just like, because you can't deny it. 
You saw what Kimberly's paying. Look, look. You saw what Greg was paying for his for his car. Look, look at look at look at um look at Tope. Tope got a fifty four thousand dollar BMW electric, six ninety a month. Fifty four thousand dollar BMW. People are paying a people are every five thousand is a hundred bucks a month. People paying a thousand eleven hundred bucks for that same vehicle. She's paying six ninety. She got rid of the bad information. See what I'm saying? This is all in my book. If y'all like this, man, Deshaun, I just want everything you teach one spot, man. I'm ready. I want to I want to move with this information for the rest of my life. Now, the book's always going to be out, but it's a digital book. It's ninety seven dollars. That's the price. And I've sold a, a lot of them at ninety seven dollars. But when we got together and said, you know what, we're going to do an official launch. We're going to start really, really talking to people because when from the day we came and started with this special, we were we already had a lot of reviews on Goodreads. So it was tons of people who in that first group who had been using this book and reviewing it. But our goal now is to say, all right, how can we help lots of people get this information? All right, we'll do a 75 percent off special for 30 minutes. Once that timer goes to zero, then it's it's back up to 97, which is still a great price. I'm not going to sit here and I, I wouldn't price now. I wouldn't price the book at two, three, four hundred dollars because then I, my goal is not to help a lot of people. But ninety seven dollars, one hundred percent fair price. Twenty four dollars, even better. So go get your seventy five percent off, um, as long as the timer isn't out. Let's go. Keep the questions coming. L said, uh, "Hold on, let me get back to my screen. Let me put Topes deal down. Hold on, comments. Real topic. So I got the book. It's amazing. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, uh, Queen. The book is in. You can you can go to. Um, I posted." I posted the link. It's Deshaun'sBook.com. Just look for that comment um, and just click on Deshaun'sBook.com. It'll take you right there. You can get your copy. Okay. Uh, this one's Facebook. We're still taking questions from all the platforms. We'll go to probably go to Instagram next. My insurance company will hold on. Let me put my here. Some of you, you may be watching on the TV. You could actually scan that QR code with your phone and you'll, you could get your 75% off your copy. All right. Um, let me get back here. Elle said, I think it's Ellie. Yep. My insurance company will ask me my mileage when I renew my insurance policy and payment increases based on mileage that I drove. 100%. You pay for usage. Doesn't matter. So the whole goal with a long-term purchase is I don't care about depreciation. Long-term. Some of you who got those cars outside and they've been out there for eight years or 10 years or 12 years or longer, we have somebody 16 years, depreciation doesn't matter. You've won. I won. Depreciation was year three, four, five, six, seven. Now that car is going to be worth about the same thing year by year. That's how you win, long-term buyer. But in the short term, you short-term buyers who are not getting to that eight-year mark, you're overpaying by not leasing because the depreciation is killing you. It's killing the value of the car you're purchasing, and then you go to trade out of it. All right. After pre-approval from different websites, what do I do from there? Uh, well, I don't. Is you, we don't do pre-approvals with a hard inquiry. We always do soft credit uh, pre-approvals. We don't want to do hard credit pre. We don't want to do hard inquiry pre-approvals because then we can't make these banks bid the way we want. Or you could, but you got to find your car in a heavy in a hurry. Because when you do the hard credit pull, here's what happens. They give you a pre-approval, but it has an expiration date. I don't like pressure when I'm shopping for a car. I have people who are shopping. I was talking to somebody earlier on, uh, on our coaching call. She's like, you know, I'm retired. I teach you how to look at the market. When you have time, time is your friend. If some of you are like, Sean, you know what? I got two, three, four months before I need a car. That is an asset. I don't as I can help you if you are if you need a car in a week, I have to be able to give you the strategy to make sure you don't overpay. If I needed a car in a week, I get bids, make sure I don't overpay. But when you have the luxury of time, you can actually watch the market because the lease deals change every month. The trends on used cars for those who are shopping for used cars, prices change every month. The trends change. You can see if the prices are going down. You can see the dealers who have been. Time is your friend. Rebates change every month. 
and so I don't like a pre-approval that says, hey, you got to find a car by this date. And if I don't find a car by this date, now I got to come back and do another hard inquiry, which is going to drop my credit score more. We don't want that. So we don't do a hard inquiry until after we found our car. Once we find our car, we get a purchase order. We leave a deposit to, to lock up the car. It's refundable. We always make sure when you leave a deposit, you always have the deposit, very important verbiage on the buyer's order, deposit refundable if car is not delivered. This replay will be on YouTube if you want to see the replay. Um, or you can get the book and you won't need out, you won't need a replay. But you put that on and then you come home and you let your bank, your credit union, all the online banks, you type in online car loan, anybody in your area, you let all these people access your credit. That's when you do the hard pull because you started the bidding process. I call this the bank bidding war. Now you're going to let all those people run your credit. It's going to show as one hard inquiry at the end of the window. But here's what you do. When whoever wins that round of the bids, you then call the dealer. And you want them to have a shot. Hey, the best rate I got so far was 6.29. But if you guys can beat it, I'll do the deal with you. See, that's how you get around the dealers who don't want to sell you a car if you're not going to give them, if you're not going to give them a chance at the rate business. We give them a chance because the best thing to have is a dealer, a finance manager who's already they've already won your bid to sell you the car but now he's calling five or six or ten some of these dealerships have 10 to 15 banks and they're calling them to try to beat the rate you got see they can't come back to you if you told them i got 6.29 they're not calling you back and saying all right i got you eight percent they're gonna call you and say one of two things hey listen I tried my best. I, I looked at all my banks. I can't beat that rate. You got a good rate. So, you know, just, you know, go with your bank and then, you know, let's schedule the delivery. That's one option, one outcome. Or they're going to say, hey, good news. I got you. I beat the rate. I got this bank to beat the rate. So I could do all the paperwork here for you, in which case they just saved you money. So you guaranteed. Y'all know what we call this. Who knows Who knows what we call the process of guaranteeing we paid the lowest? Let me see. It's a couple of people that might have been on here on a couple of live streams. I know we got a lot of new people, but who knows what we call the process of guaranteeing that we got the lowest price? Price assurance. Price assurance. When you buy a TV... You want price assurance. That means there's no chance in heaven that this TV was less money somewhere else. Price assurance. All right. That's the bank bidding war. That's how we do it. So that's your that's your answer, baby face. You whether you got the pre-approval or not, that's the process of how you're going to end up choosing who gives you your loan and who who you go with for your loan. Okay. All right. Let's keep them coming. 1.5% rule. You got to type a whole question. You can't type like a, a, a incomplete phrase. All right, how do you get 75% off? I go to the site and it's still showing $97. Ah, that means you missed the you missed the countdown. Uh Sydney. Um All right, listen. I like I listen. I I love the commitment everybody. Let me I'm gonna, I'm going to put a special link here. And I had to create this because this was happening a lot. And I know it's people on here that's like, man, I want the book and I want it at the 75%. So I created this emergency link. All right. I'm posting it here. If you missed the countdown, go to that link. 10 minutes. You'll see there's a countdown there. <laughs> like, Don't miss it again. All right. Adrian, uh, when you get your book, you see a support email, just email support or DM me. Because usually what happens is. A letter in the email was just typed incorrectly. You, you see the countdown. Sometimes you're typing fast. We deliver lots of these books. So if it's not in it, make sure you check your spam, though. Check your spam as well. OK, uh, do you offer service where you do all the shopping? I don't because it's not necessary. It's not necessary. I would have to teach you to fish. 
me, anybody shopping for you does not help you at all because you don't understand. You don't know if you got the best offer. You're just putting a 30 to 50 to a hundred thousand dollar transaction in someone else's hands. Cause you're a little nervous. You could be nervous, but that's not financially wise to do. So even with me, all right, what I'm teaching you is a process where you sit at home and you're in control. It's not like, oh, I hope this will work. That's like saying, oh, I hope going into the, I don't want to overpay for the spaghetti sauce. All right, go into the supermarket, look at seven brands of spaghetti sauce. You ain't going to overpay for it. I don't want to overpay for the, uh, I got to get an 80 inch TV. I'm so worried I'm going to overpay for it. You look at enough 80 inch TVs all over the internet, you're going to guarantee you don't overpay for it. So what we teach is the same process. Multiple offers, online, you can't mess it up. You can't mess it up. The book link, if you're on TikTok, is just click that picture of me, and you'll see a website there, carsfromhometoolkit.com. Click that website, and then when you go there, there's a button that says, get the book 75% off. And you won't leave the broadcast if you're on TikTok. You, you'll actually still hear the broadcast. All right. Um, let's see. Come on. Keep them coming. I, this is a great group. I love the questions. And uh, let's go. What about test driving cars? Good question. This one's on YouTube. So test driving cars is different depending on if you're shopping for a new car or a pre-owned car. If you're shopping for a new car or a lease, we're always test driving the car before we get offers on it, always, because we need to see if we like it. We're test driving in a way where no one's pressuring us because here's a rule that you don't break. You don't talk numbers in the dealership. You do not talk numbers in the dealership at all. If you're talking numbers in the dealership, you could just give yourself a signal. I'm, I'm, I'm not following Sean's way. And you're a grown person. So, but I want you to have these boundaries so that you know, okay, wait, I'm going back to the old way. Now, what am I doing here? You're just here to test drive. And then once you decide, you know what? We like this vehicle. I like you to, if you're leasing, find two to three that you like, because we don't know what the lease program is going to be. And what you'll find is if you get out there, see, this is such a fun process when you do it my way. Because none of these people, y'all, y'all, they've kind of made you scared to go in and test drive. But when you know you're not talking numbers, you're going to enjoy it. So you go in, you test drive, you get out of there in 20 minutes. In fact, in my book, I have a section in step four. I call it shopping, not buying, where I give you the script. There's a particular way I like you to set up the test drive. I like you to call a dealership, ask for the person who's been there the longest, ask for the person that everybody loves, set up the test drive with them. Because if you get that new salesman who's new on the block or he doesn't care about people, he'll tell you, uh, all right, I'll have a car. I'll meet you here. You'll get there, and then there's no car ready for you. Oh, this is, you know, the car sold. Let me show you something else. So you, you want to, who you talk to is important when you're setting up your test drive. But that's what you do for a new car. Used car, it's different. Used car, we're shopping online, and the test drive is the last part. Because it does you no good to go test drive a car and then go, you're not getting that car. Yeah, I could go drive one used Honda, but then the one that ends up being the best deal, that is, it may not drive the same. So we don't test drive a used car. That's our last step before we shake their hand. So like my used Infinity, I got an Infinity truck about a year ago, shopped online, found the best one with the biggest discount. And the biggest discount off the brand new price, hint, hint, clue, clue. When you are shopping for a used car, you're not searching for the biggest discount from the dealer. You're searching for the used car that gives you the biggest discount from the original price when it was new. Type dollar signs because I'm going to say that again. And then I'll tell you all about how I got this infinity and the process of the test drive. The dealer discounting is secondary to you actually finding out what the brand new price was and finding out how much discount you're getting from the brand new price. If a car was 42, this is how many people got in trouble into all through the pandemic 
because they were paying prices for used cars that was so close to the new car price, if they had just been taught to look at the new car price, how much was this car when it was new? 32,000, okay, how are you charging me 31? So how you know a great discount on a used car is that discount, okay? Also in my book, everything you're gonna hear me teach, that's not going to change. I call that the true value percentage. True value percentage, TVP. It's the percentage off based on the original new car price versus what you're offering me. So once I did that, I saw which one uh, outside of looking at the title, looking at the service records, looking at the accidents. Once I saw the biggest discount off the new, I went there, test drove it, shook the hand. I asked him, hey, could you do another eight hundred or a thousand dollars off? He said, listen, uh, look, I, I, I could I could uh, I could do another five hundred. Shook his hand. Locked it up. Guarant price assurance. Because if I had picked the other infinity, here's the kill, here's the kicker. The other infinity, I, I narrowed it down to top four, but the others were the brand new price was 46, brand new price was 48, brand new price was 4, 4, 52. This one that I got, brand new price was 50, 54,500. And when I did the bit the discount, it was a 42% discount. The other ones were a lower discount. So although the price on those other ones might seem lower, it wasn't as much discount. So it wasn't as good of a deal. See, market value, throw that out the window. We don't care about market value. When you're shopping for a used car, that's what you care about. True value percentage. All right? But that's how we test drive depending on whether buying a new car or leasing a new car or buying a used car. All right? Great question. Great question. All right. Uh, will we be able to? Will we be a car expert after reading your book? Yeah. In the beginning, my first book, I wrote a lot. It was more of um, my first book was called "The 52 Car Buying Questions Smart People Don't Ask." I wrote that in July 2021. That that book is still rated five stars on Goodreads.com. The reason why I changed it is because it wasn't step by step. It was very much, you said, that was deep, bro. Listen, I, I preach, this is, listen, I've been, I've, 2006, I got in the car business. So I could, I could do this stuff in my sleep. So anybody that's willing to listen, anybody who's willing to take what I'm telling them, that's, I, I hold myself accountable to making sure you win. So, um, see, I can't read comments and talk. What was I talking about? <laughs> Sometimes I'll be in the middle of a sentence, I'll look up at a comment and uh, it'll throw me off. What, what was I just talking about? Somebody tell me. Hold on. Hold on. Anybody? I was talking about the book. Oh, thank you. Carl. Yep. Thank you. Yes. So, yeah, it, was, it wasn't step by step. So, um, somebody asked if we if we use your book, will we be a car expert? That was the goal of the first book. I was trying to turn people into me. I wanted you to know everything I know. I had stuff about the banks and the different ways things are set up. And again, if you type in the 52 car buying quest, not available anymore, you'll see that book was rated five stars. People loved it. People used it. But I said to myself, I could put a better book out there. Because I don't want you to be me. Look, you're not interested in being me. Here's what you're interested in. Deshaun, teach me how to get the deals you get. I don't need to know everything you know. I don't need the 14 years of experience. What I need to know is how do I get the same deal you would get? And that's when I said, okay, we got to go step by step. And then we got to cut out all the extra education and we're going to learn by doing. I'm not going to teach it. And I said to myself, what would I tell you if you called me and said, Deshaun, I need a car. What's my first step? Boom. I would ask you this question. And based on your answer, we go to the next step. And I just did that through the book because I was doing that for years. When I, when I sold cars from Mercedes, I, I used to tell my friends, call me because I was worried about them. Like my first friend that I saw that got a crazy, horrible deal. Right. I said, why didn't you call me? He said, well, you know, um, that was when I worked for GM, quite honestly. I saw a couple of people getting bad deals, but they thought because I sold 
General Motors, yeah, Deshaun, I want to buy. And it, it happened more with Mercedes. It happened a whole lot more. I started getting less calls from my friends because they're like, you know, hey, man, you know, I know you with Mercedes, man. You know, I didn't want to bother you with my thing, man. I was just looking for a Nissan. I'm like, no, this is bad. So I started saying, listen, anytime, just call me, please. So I would be walking them, coaching them. And um, everything that I would do, I just put in the second book. That's why it became step by step by step and less about a bunch of education. It just like, Deshaun, just tell me what to do. I don't need to know the education of why I'm doing this. Leasing versus buying, I do have an educational video in the book that you link to and it educates you on leasing versus buying. But the rest is just do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Take the guesswork out. So great question, though. I'm glad you asked that. So for everybody that just jumped on, people who are asking about the book, it's my new digital book. It's called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. It's 75% off as part of our grand, uh, not grand opening, our, our book launch. And 75% uh, off for 30 minutes. So if you go to my TikTok bio, if you want to get it, it's normally $97, but you can get it. It'll be in your inbox in two or three minutes. Go to my TikTok bio, click that picture of me, and you'll see a website there. Click it, and then click the button that says, get my book for 75% off. Okay, it's everything I teach you. Now, here's the thing. I'm not holding back. Y'all been on here long enough with me to know this guy is not holding back. I ain't, You ain't asking me a question, and then I'm like, well, if you want to know, get the book, you know, like that's not how I do. But I just know that some of you are like, I want everything in one spot so that I can reference it. For those of you, that's you. Go to my Instagram bio, get your copy, go to Deshaun's book, or you can scan the QR code, Deshaun'sBook.com or scan the QR code. All right. It's so many people still on here. We can keep this thing going for a little bit longer because it's just it's just a lot of y'all on here right now. So let's go. Um. Where's the special link for the 75% off in my TikTok bio? Um, let's go. Hold on. I go to Instagram. We haven't done one Instagram in a while. Instagram, y'all are looking for a 2018 Escalade. I think they were 78,000. You want to look at that. You don't know if that one's overpriced. Don't fall in love with, with one used car. Do not fall in love with one used car ever. The only way you know that a used car is great is when you saw the whole market. I look at at least 100 miles because how often do we buy a car? Every how many years, y'all? Every how many years, you fill in the blank, do we buy a car? Charlotte, just DM me, okay? I'll look for you specifically. I can't see DMs because we got like, we just hit 2 million followers across all these platforms. But if I know you're, yeah, because I don't want to put the support email here, support emails for people who got the book and you you maybe, you know, it's not in your email, it's not in your spam because usually one letter was off in the email. So just DM me. All right, so you're buying a car. Look at these numbers, y'all. Every four years, every seven years, every five years, every, look, every nine years. The reason why, you are, um, hold on, hold on one second. No, no. Mm -mm. Okay, my fault. My fault. All right. I forgot what I was. I was. Just, I forgot what question I was answering. Like I'm so busy looking at all these platforms, y'all just y'all just gotta help me out because I'm I'm literally going off the top, and I'll literally look at a question on Instagram, start talking about it. I can't look at the screens and answer the questions. So as the new people come on, if you see me answering a question, just wait until I finish that answer, then post your question, <laughs> because if I look at it. Especially what we we look, we're an hour and 20 minutes in. So <laughs> hour and 20 minutes in. We'll go for another 10 minutes because um uh, y'all can see this is this is this is what happens to me. All right, uh I'm showing full price. Just DM me. DM me. I'll say I can't send you a link, I can't post it to TikTok in the comments. 
uh, but DM me. If you miss the countdown, it's showing a $97 price. DM me and I'll send you um, I'll send you this emergency link that I posted to Facebook and TikTok. All right. Um, let's go. How often do we buy a car? Yep, and that was the question, but I asked that question for a reason based off a question someone else had asked. Yeah, I asked that question for a reason. I usually look at getting rid of a car after 225,000 miles. There you go. Use it up. Use it up. Use it up. Um, is Skoda Kodiak Sportline good, a good family car? That's a question for, listen, very important, y'all. If you ever want to know, is this car a good car? Is this car a bad car? Don't ask people, not even me, because we don't have enough information. There's not enough data because I might say, yeah, I like that car. Meanwhile, there's 10,000 people. That car has probably been sold to thousands and thousands of people. And there might be 10,000 of them out there that's having a problem with it. 10,000 of them out there where it's having electrical problems. How do we find that out? Every single car you want to look at, if I don't care what car, I don't care if you love it. If you don't do this, you're going to end up, you could end up hating it. You, you go to Google and you type in the year, you act, you have to add the year because sometimes the 2019 was trash, but the 2020, they fixed it and it's great. So you always add the year and you type in the year, make and model 2019, Kia, whatever, initial quality. There's three terms that you need to know. Two are for short-term people who lease and two are for long-term people who purchase. Those of you who lease, you want to type in the year, make, and model, initial quality. Initial quality is a report of what people are saying about the car the first 90 days. Because cars come in right off the line. Sometimes it's the day they're built. They come in, they go out the dealership, and in a month, they're back in the dealership, in the service department. Initial quality. Initial quality is also going to tell you what people are saying about, it, or is the car easy to use? Uh, like first 90 days, what are the people saying? What's the data showing? After you do that, and, and look, when you type that into Google, you're gonna don't you don't need to go to the second page. A bunch of articles are gonna come up. What you do is you you skim them and you just look for any red flags, any bright lights. If you see anything that's alarming in those first couple articles. Reliability score, seven out of 10. Anything, initial quality score, seven out of 10. This vehicle has ranks lower than most. That's that's red flags. And your love for that vehicle is gonna start to subside. You're gonna be like, dang, I really like this, but it it don't like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, a car could, you know, if a car's gonna be in the shop every 90 days, it doesn't like its owner. So after you do the initial quality, you replace the word initial quality with reliability. This is for short-term people. You do not lease a car before you type this into Google. Every single car it takes five minutes. After you do initial quality, you do reliability. Reliability is going to tell you what the first, what the people are saying for the first three years, which is the average lease. That's your lease term. So once you look at those two, skim the same pages, look for red flags. It it passes. Now you can go get offers on that car. For those of you who are going to be buying, you're going to look at reliability and you're going to look at longevity. Type in the year, make, model, longevity. Right at the top, you might see something that says this car is known to last 200 to 300,000 miles when, it, when you maintain it. Good sign. You might see uh, owners report transmission problems as the car ages. Red flag. There you go. Thanks for posting it. I see somebody posted initial quality, reliability, longevity. The first two are for short term people who lease. The last two are for long term people who are purchasing. So don't ask anybody their opinion on you. Could, it, it doesn't even matter because it's subjective. Somebody says, hey, you like that car? Yeah, man, I love it. It's so comfortable. You might get in and be like, what are they talking about? I hate this thing. is so uncomfortable. So people's opinions don't matter. 
Go to the data. That's how you protect yourself. All right. Does that make sense? That's how you protect yourself. OK. Uh, just check. Just check your spam, uh, baby face. And uh, when you purchase the book, y'all, the first thing I give you is a support email. First thing. Congratulations. The book is on its way to your email. If it's not in your email in 10 minutes, email support right here. All right. So if you didn't, if, if you didn't go back, screenshot that and then go back. And um, if you if you missed it, then just um, just DM me uh, if you're on if you're on. Um, you can't DM me if you're on YouTube. Check your spam. But uh, let me see. I can't even send you a private message. I can't even send you a private message. So. Just do me a favor and like um, go to another platform, I guess, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, any of those three and just send me a DM. But when you get your book, y'all, screenshot the support email, because when you go to your email, check your inbox and check your spam, that book's going to be there unless there's a letter off. And some, and most times, there, you know, you're typing fast and there's a letter off. <laughs> so, all right. I have about nine months left on your lease. This one's TikTok. We, you know, we've been taking questions for everybody from every platform. I have nine months left on my lease and I'm about to go over miles. What should I do? Nine months left, do an equity assessment. Jackie, equity assessment. Call your bank. In fact, go to YouTube, watch the rebroadcast, unless you have my book. Equity assessment. You need to know what can you sell that lease and get out clean. But don't be in a hurry to make a move. Mileage penalties are not big in the beginning. You know, if you're going over by a couple hundred dollars, you're talking about very small penalties, but you want to do an equity assessment. You want to call your leasing company, find out how much you owe. That's called a payoff. And then you're going to go to CarMax. You're going to go to this replay will be up on um, on YouTube. So if you, we, we talked about this. CarMax, driveway, Carvana. Um, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer, um, Auto Nation, Sell My Car, and Car Guru, Sell My Car. That's six offers. We get bids for everything. Those of you who've been here, you know that. When you get those bids, because we don't trade cars, when you get those bids, it's going to tell you what your equity position is. If it's below, if all those bids are below your payoff, then your only shot of getting you, you're comparing that to getting out early, but you don't want to get out early because you got a lot of payments left. You might want to go a little, a little longer, wait till you have fewer payments left. But the first thing to do is do the equity assessment because most times that's the best way to move. I can sell out of this thing early and I'll just start shopping for my lease now and sell this vehicle. Okay. And if you didn't know you could sell a lease, you can. So we've been talking about that. But go to YouTube, catch the replay, or you're like, you could get my book. It's 75% off. It's in my TikTok bio, and you could turn right to the section on equity assessment. It's step two. There's three kinds of equity assessment, y'all. One of them is for those of you who have cars that are paid off or have a loan on them. The second is for those who have a lease. No third-party restriction. You're with a company like Toyota Financial. You're with Chase. You're with there's several leasing companies where you could just sell to the highest bidder. And then the third equity assessment is for people who have a third party restriction. So you're going to get your online offers and then you're going to sell to a local dealer, whoever wins the bid, because a third party restriction does not mean you can't sell your lease. It's very important. It doesn't mean you buy the car and then resell it. When you buy the car, you pay taxes. That's money. That's money going. When you buy the car, you pay fees. Money going. A third party restriction just limits who you can sell to. A, a third party restriction means you must sell to a local dealer. That doesn't mean you walk into the dealer you bought it from and say, hey, all right, I'm going to sell it to you. No. We have a conversation. I have a script in my book. We talk to the used car manager and we're talking to several used car managers and we're seeing who's going to pay the most for the car. Because the thing about leases, they're very, very new. They're two to three years old. So every single used car manager in America wants to buy these cars. So we get bids and that's how we sell our cars with a third party restriction because we avoid the fees. We don't have to pay taxes. We don't have to pay fees. Those of you who might have heard of people who bought and resold, I would never do it. 
again, why would I want to pay taxes, three, four thousand in taxes, two thousand in taxes plus fees? It comes out of my equity, comes out of my profit. All right. Thank you, Gilly Gill. Good to see you again. My man, Gilly Gill, checking in. Multiple, my, that's my guy. I love it. All right. Listen, y'all, this was a little long one. We just hit an hour and a half. Great show. Uh, I'm going to have something in my bio by next week that's going to link you to a calendar so you will be able to monitor when I'm live. So you'll be able to see. All right. Sean will be live Tuesday, 12. You'll be able to add it to your calendar so you can meet us here. But um, this is what I love. I love that we, we probably had collectively i look when i closed the live we probably had eight nine hundred people come through here in the last hour and a half uh i hope you guys got value everybody got value out of the live show type type uh type, type dollar signs if everybody got value this is the kind of stuff that we're going to be doing i want you to be able to get these questions answered i want you to be able to have access to great information that is going to keep money in your household all right everything that i teach you're going to see for those like my book has everything I teach. My videos on social media have we put out probably I, I, I don't know how many videos we put out. Everything that you're going to see on the live, you're going to say, yeah, I remember you saying that in a video. Everything you see in my book, you're going to see, wow, I remember him saying that in a video. So the information doesn't change. It's just how do you want to get it? If you want it all in one spot, you get the book. If you want to go through the social media videos now, only thing about that you got to know is those social media videos are for all different kinds of people. They're for all, uh, every one of you on here. You, 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 some of you are high mileage drivers. Videos for y'all. Some of you are going to be leasing. Videos for y'all. Some of you are going to sell a lease. There's videos for y'all. Some of you are going to buy a used car. There's videos for y'all. So if you want to go through all my social media videos, you'll find the strategy but you got to piece it together. The book has everything in a step-by-step -step way. That's why it's called car shopping for people that hate car shopping, seven steps to saving time, money, and avoiding dealerships. And it's step-by-step. -step. Step one, you start out here. Step seven is delivery, which means if you got my book, you shouldn't be reading step seven unless you're picking up your car. <laughs> you shouldn't be reading step seven. Step seven in my book, I'm saying, congratulations, great job. You did the process, you got your deal. Now let's get ready for delivery. You shouldn't be reading that unless you, that's the way the book is designed. It's not this book you just read all the way through and you're like, wow, that was good. No, by the time you get to step seven, your car should be outside or you should be on your way to pick up the car. Does that make sense? So as part of the book launch, we're doing 75% off. If you haven't missed the countdown yet, you can get your copy. It's a digital book, and you'll also get free updates. So you don't have to worry about the shine. What about when things change? What about when the market changes? What about when new websites come out? I'm on top of all of that. And what happens is I go in, I update the file of the book. You open up the book. You're going to literally be opening up the book and seeing, wait a minute, something changed. Yeah. <laughs> wait, I remember this script. Something to do. Oh, wait. I remember the websites here. This is a new website. It wasn't here before. That's the that's the beautiful thing about having a digital book. When I update the master file, you go, you click that link and it, you get the new version. That's how we make sure we're always ahead of everybody else. That's how we make sure we're always on top of it. So it's normally ninety seven dollars. You can go to my TikTok bio, get yours. You can click on the um, uh, you can go to Deshaun's book dot com. I'm going to post the link one more time in Facebook. Here you go. You can go to this link. And I'm going to post it again in YouTube. Everybody who, who uh, if you missed the 75% off, I'm going to post. A, a, this is a special link. And then anybody on TikTok, just DM me and I'll get you the special link if you missed the countdown. But the new special link is only going to be good for uh, 75, for uh, 10 minutes. But other than that, I see you just got yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Wright. I appreciate y'all. We'll be back. Uh, we'll keep these live shows going. And uh, this was a good one. This was a real good one. All right. I'll see y'all soon. Mm -hmm. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Car Shopping Secrets.
come on in. We are on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. We're going to be taking questions from every platform. So just come on in. And I want you, the goal, just so you know, is to answer as many questions as possible. If you don't know me, my name is Deshaun. I go by Deshaun, the auto advisor. I spent 14 years in the car business. And now my mission is to make sure you guys know how to save thousands of dollars when you buy or lease cars. Um, and you know how to shop for cars the new way where you're in control. So that is the mission. All right. It's going to be a lot easier. It's going to be almost stress free. The, the, the more you do it, the, the more stress free it will be. But you have to learn how to shop from home the right way the right way. So come on in. Yep. I see you kindly. Just ask your question and let's get right to it. Let's get right to it. And before the entire broadcast, my new book, Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping, will be available in my TikTok bio, in my Instagram bio for 75% off. It's normally $97. It's a digital book. It's everything I teach. It's called Car Shopping for People That Hate Car Shopping. It's rated five stars on goodreads.com and you can get your copy right now. So let's go. Send in these questions. How do you get a car in your business name and credit? It's simple. Um, if you're going to go, getting cars in your business name is the same as getting cars in your personal name until it's time to sign, you know, sign the paperwork. Whose name is it going in? Now, if you're going to use business financing, then that's its own strategy. So you can teach, you can learn from somebody who's teaching business financing, lines of credit, things of that nature. But when it comes to buying cars and getting your best price, which I don't see business people doing. I'm going to be 100%. There's not a lot of people that I see who, who are teaching you guys how to put cars in your business name who are even remotely interested in getting the best deal on the car. They're so busy getting the car in their business name that they literally will overpay thousands of dollars just to get the car. Okay. Um, Omar, question. In your book, it says that if you sell your lease to another dealer, you have to buy the car first. That means I have to write my current bank check. Nope. That's actually our plan A. That's not our plan A for selling our lease. If you have what most people do who are trying to get their lease equity, if you don't know you could sell a lease, if you didn't know you could sell a lease type of one, this is going to be relevant to you. We've sold leases for the last couple of years. You've always been able to sell them, but the last couple of years, it's been, you know, there's a lot of money made. And when when they saw, when banks saw people making a lot of money selling their leases, five, seven, ten thousand dollars. Some of them implemented a third party restriction and that they limited who you can sell to. So they started letting. So then what you saw was a lot of people started buying their leases and reselling them. I don't like when you buy your lease and resell it because you're going to pay taxes on the purchase and you're going to pay fees on the purchase. And then that's coming out of your profit. So I don't teach that in the book. Omar, keep continue reading or just read that section over. It's a lot of money involved in that section. When we have a third party restriction, we're selling, we're getting bids from a local dealer. We're talking to used car dealers. I have a script in there of what to say. We're selling our car to a local used car dealer. And if there's more money to be made buying and reselling, then you can do that. But oftentimes, because dealers most times don't need to pay the taxes, the dealer payoff is lower usually than the customer payoff which means you can sell direct to a dealer and put more money in your pocket, but you must get bids. And that's what, that's what I teach. So just read that section carefully, Omar. All right, come on in. Could everybody hit the share button? Who is into sharing? If you're into sharing, if you share great information, if you're into financial literacy, if you believe that people should be able to, you know, have the information to make the best decisions for themselves, then hit that share button. I appreciate all the sharers. I cannot do this. We can't do this mission without the sharers. Thank y'all. All right, let's go. Let's go. I see Instagram. Let's go. Want to trade my car, which I still owe money on and I want to lease now. That's going to be very common. Many of you are going to find out as you you find out you will, you know, unfortunately, many of you were just programmed never to lease. You were programmed that leasing was bad. And when you find out the math and how much that's cost you, the first thing you're going to want to do is get out of your finance and go into a lease. So you need to call your bank. In my book, I call this the equity assessment. This is step two. After you decide now, you've already done step one, which is great. Step one is deciding, should I buy or lease? Asking yourself the most important question, how many years am I keeping this car? To decide, are we going to go for our long-term purchase where we can avoid the depreciation in the long term? Or are we going to go for a short-term lease to avoid the depreciation hit? 
once you answer that question that's step one now we move on to step two which is our equity assessment that's when we have to look at the current car we have and we have to ask our we have to find out where what our position is in it are we in a negative position are we in a positive equity position so you're going to call your bank find out what your payoff is get your payoff don't look at your residual value on your contract don't look at you know whatever your statement is if you're if you're going you can do this with a finance you can do this with a lease the equity assessment process starts the same way. You call, you get a payoff, you find out what you owe, and then you're going to go to the online bidding, to the online car buyers, and you're going to get offers so that you can find out relative to what you owe, how much is the market value of your vehicle. And the market value is based on how much someone's willing to pay you for the car. It's not based on what a algorithm site says. It's based on, I got six, seven, eight cash offers, which is when you follow this process, that's what you're going to get. And you take the highest one and then you look at what you owe. And if the highest offer is greater than your payoff, that's called equity. If the highest offer is lower than your payoff, that's negative equity. In which case you have to go with a different plan with negative equity. And some of you are going to have negative equity. You're still going to want to transfer that to a lease. Um, but you need to know how much negative equity you have. So you must complete the equity assessment first. Then we move on. Um, Pete, how much normally is a good amount to put down? So when we look at putting money down, it's all payment management. If I'm financing a car, my goal is to pay off the car as quick as possible because I'm keeping it for, you know, 8, 10, 12, 15 years. Then I'm going to put as much money as I, as I can down. But it goes back to what we talked about in the last segment. If y'all if y'all were here in the last segment, you remember we talked about what you're doing with your money. So let's say a person is using them. You know, you got your money invested. You're getting returns on your money, 8, 10, 12 percent then if you have a low interest rate, you might want to ride that out. So there's three ways to go. You're either going to say, all right, I'm not really interested in getting, you know, investing my money. I'm not getting a lot on my money. Most of my money is either in the bank or in savings. And that's what I do. In which case you might say, I want to pay off this car as quick as possible. And then I want to just have no car payment. So I'll put more money down in that scenario. In a second scenario, you're investing your money and you say, OK, I'm going to leverage. I'm going to use the bank's money at a very low interest rate if it's available. Um, two, three percent, zero percent, point nine, nine percent. I'm going to use this money, let my money make more money for me. And then I'm going to put as little as possible down. And then the third case is when you say, OK, well, the third case is probably going to cash or, or a lease scenario. But in but that's how you would compare it. It depends on your personal choices, what you're doing with your money. And if and, and if you're if you're not into investing and making a lot of money on your money, then you probably want to get that car paid off as quick as possible, in which case put as much as you could afford to put down so that the loan's out of the way as soon as possible. You know, but it's all personal. All right. Uh, I see uh, from IG. Is it is it a way to get a lease without a down payment? Look, are you kidding me? I'm, and that's not an insult to your question. That's just. This is all we do. I know you might have looked at these questions and you said, I mean, you might have looked at these lease deals online and you see all of these deals that say, hey, put three thousand down or the thirty two ninety nine. Do at least signing. Listen, the lease is custom. You choose the mileage. You choose you choose the 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 the, the structure. So the way we shop, this is all in my book and, and this is all in my free video. So as you go through all my free videos, you all going to hear all of these things match. Whether you on these lives with me, whether you watching my videos, can we keep hitting the likes on TikTok? Let's shoot the likes up even more. Appreciate y'all. Whether you're looking at the free videos, whether you're on a live or whether you're in the book, you're going to see they're all the same. So when you, when the way we shop for a lease is we are picking our car and we're going to get our offers with only first month payment out of pocket, 12,000 miles per year. There, if anyone tells you they can't do that, they're lying to you. Straight up, they are lying to you. And that's why we never put our faith in one dealer. In my book, I have something called the 25 to 5 strategy, where we're connecting with 25 local dealers online in 20 minutes. I know it sounds crazy, but when you got a computer and you know where to go and what to say, and you're using copy and paste messages, you're just letting them know, I'm going to let 25 dealers know in 20 minutes what I'm looking for. Because out of that 25 dealers, maybe 10, 12 are going to have a car that, I, that I'm interested in, depending on the car, maybe 10, 12. And then out of that, I'm looking to get five to seven offers. So it's 25 to five, 25 connections, five offers. 
And until you start doing this, until you start looking at five offers, y'all, you're not going to see how overpriced some dealers are. When you start looking at five offers, you're going to see how overpriced some dealers are. And because about 80% from what we see, and I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of people around the country, over 1,600 people now in my in my, in my my private group, there is literally 80% of dealers are going to take a shot at you to the tune of thousands and thousands. But 20% of dealers are going to be the best. They're going to be honest. They're going to make shopping from home easy. They're going to try to beat their competition. And that's the people that we end up purchasing from or leasing from. Um, is it better to lease or buy when using for a bit? It um, depends on the type of business. The only business that I say it's not better to lease. See, leasing is a short is for people who are not keeping their cars eight years. Very simple. It's called the eight year rule. And when you see that the goal, wh what it's about is avoiding depreci the depreciation hit. When you you're when you're buying a car, your biggest expense by far is depreciation. If you buy a car today for thirty thousand dollars, brand new car, what's that car worth in five years, y'all? Throw some numbers out there. If you buy a car today, thirty thousand dollars, brand new car, what's that car going to be worth in five years? Throw some numbers out there. Thanks, Ed. I see you, man. Appreciate you. Look, let me see. Let's see what people come in at. Hold on. Hold the question, Dolan. Now, I got my man Dolan working in the background so we can see everybody's question. But hold on. Let's go deep on this. It's not going to be worth 17. If you could buy a car for 30,000 and then it's worth 17 in five years, um, that's not going to happen. So let's let's just uh, and, and 22. See, see. All right. This is a deeper problem. Let me let me let me let me hit on this, y'all. Let me hit on this. This is a big problem. All right. Some of you let the last three years fool you. And this this is this happened to car dealers, too. There are still car dealers out there that think this is pandemic and they're they're, they're trying their best to hold on to what was. I used to during the pandemic, some car salesman said, man, somebody will walk in. I tell them they got to pay eight thousand over sticker and I got it. I could get them to pay that. They're still trying to hold on to that. They don't realize that over a year ago, their competition started adjusting and started really doing what well, the competition was doing deals from the get go. So that's them. But let me talk to you. If you bought a car in 2018, 17, 16, 19, 20, early 20, 20, you could have sold that car and actually either made money. In fact, if most people made money. That's gone. Don't let that think. Don't let that get you thinking that there is some that you can buy a car and flip a car or break even on a car. That was a once in a lifetime um, opportunity based on limited inventory, based on a global pandemic, based on a microchip shortage, based on an, uh, 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 an, an industry that usually puts 60 million cars a year through the transaction, they didn't have it. And so everything went up seven to $15,000, everything, everything. Some of you cashed out. If you cashed out during that time, those last three years, 2020, 2021, 2022, if you cashed out, you sold something and you made a bunch of money, type a dollar sign, just type about dollar sign so we can actually see. Because some of you, I was talking to you back then and you cashed out through my advice. And some of you, you just found out on your own or you found out through somewhere else and you ended up cashing out and making a bunch of money. If that's you, put dollar signs. But that is over. The times we had people buying cars in 2019, overpaying for them or buying cars and coming back and flipping them and making money on them. You try that now, you're going to lose your shirt. It's over. So I'm here to tell you that the normal depreciation on a car is a 20% loss the first year. 20% loss the first year. So if you pay 30 grand for a car, that car is worth 80% of 30 grand after a year. With normal driving. If you're a high mileage driver, it's worth even less than that. If you're a low mileage driver, very low, it might it's worth a little more than that. But we all that's standard 20% going. Second year, you're gonna lose probably another 15%. Third year, you're probably gonna lose about 12.5%. Probably lose another 12.5% the next year. Then you'll lose 10%. And that's the depreciation curve. That's where we are. So when I asked y'all three, four minutes ago, if we bought a $30,000 car, what, what it would be worth today? The answer is what it would be worth after five years, 
The answer is probably going to be about 12 grand. The answer is probably going to be about 12 grand. And we've gotten so far, I had to go deep on that subject. So I kind of forgot what the original question was and how we got on it. But the name of the game is avoiding depreciation. That was that that was how we got on it. So if you don't know, that's your biggest expense. Your biggest expense is not maintenance. It's not, it's depreciation. You're losing thousands and thousands of dollars in depreciation. So the, the, the when you're deciding, should I lease a purchase? When I tell you the answer is eight years, if you're not keeping your next car eight years, you should be leasing it because if you get a great lease deal, you can't get a regular lease deal. You must get a great lease deal that comes through multiple offers. Then you're going to avoid those big depreciation losses that these owners are taking. Now, at the same time, if you're buying your car to keep eight years, you should be purchasing it because once you once that depreciation levels out, remember what I said. You lose this percent the first year, this percent the second year. But every year later, it starts to get smaller and smaller. Eventually, you're only losing like 5% on the car. And that's the time where you want to keep it. That's when you won. That's the reward. That's where you're like, okay, now I'm winning based on my purchase. Okay? So whenever you're looking at leasing versus purchase, it's a long term. You got to look down the road and you must ask yourself, how long am I going to keep this car? All right? All right, let's go. Dolan, next question. Dolan pulling questions in from every platform. Um, should lease rates increase depending on yearly mileage allotment? So we always shop with 12,000 miles per year. Find your best deal. Shop multiple offers the way I just laid out in the beginning of the show. I gave you the structure on how we shop offers. If you missed it, watch the replay. Once you get multiple offers, you get five to seven offers. Pick your best one. And then you adjust the mileage because you want to adjust your mileage once you know you're dealing with an honest dealer. Once you know a dealer has won the bid, they're not going to try to put uh, extra. Like if, if the mileage to go from twelve thousand to fifteen is twenty five dollars a month more, you know, an honest dealer will mark it up twenty five dollars. You start you, you don't have an honest dealer. They'll mark it up thirty five dollars. They'll mark it up thirty two dollars. Everything will have a little cushion in there when and you don't want that because cushion is built in profit that, you know, they're not going to disclose. So. Once you do that, yeah, you pay for additional mileage, but but you don't you don't adjust your mileage until you actually find your deal. And yeah, you pay for mileage because you pay for usage. But then again, when you have a great lease, like I'm gonna show y'all a couple great leases throughout the show, people who are getting, I mean, ridiculous deals right now. And y'all see to add a little more mileage to these leases is it, the payment is still pennies. It's ridiculous. Go ahead, Dolan. But you got to shop first and then you adjust. All right. YouTube looking to buy Forerunner, but they have a fifteen hundred dollar BS protection package. OK, they is one dealer. It's not Toyota. Toyota's Forerunner. This gentleman shopping for Toyota Forerunner, y'all. Uh, the, the dealer that you went to has a fifteen hundred dollar BS fee. That's why we don't shop and put our faith in one dealer. You know how many Forerunners there are the way you saw them? I don't care what car you're looking at. You could be looking at the most rare G G wagon. There's at least uh, there's at least a couple more in the country. So when it comes to something like a Forerunner, there's thousands of them. No matter what color, you might say, "Yeah, but I like this color." There's thousands of them. Thousands. That's a mass-produced vehicle. So you have to have that in your mind. If you start looking at it like, "Oh, it's only one of these," oh, they got you because they're going to make you think that's the only one. And you're not going to see that there's other ones that not only may they not have the BS fees, they actually may be lower priced. And that's what you need to be seeing. We go about a hundred miles out when we start our used car uh, sales. In my book in day five, I have something called the multiple marketplace strategy. I laid out the 25 to five strategy. That's how you shop for new cars and leases. That's a different strategy. When we're shopping for pre-owned cars, we're using the multiple marketplace strategy. Can y'all shoot, keep shooting? Up to, uh, can y'all keep tapping the screen? Everybody on TikTok, we got a couple hundred people. This is crazy. Could y'all just keep tapping the screen, shoot the likes up? Let's keep grabbing attention over here on TikTok. Appreciate all of y'all. But when you are shopping, when you're shopping for a pre-owned car, we're using the multiple marketplace strategy where we're looking at every website that has used cars. Some of you may think car gurus is the same as cars.com, the same as auto trader. They're not. These companies have different contracts, different dealerships, 
different uh, places that they advertise uh, inventory for. And not only are you shopping those marketplaces, you're shopping the, the Carvanas, you're shopping the CarMaxes, because occasionally, sometimes they'll have the best price on a particular vehicle. You never know what they're going to do. So if you're not shopping them and looking at all the used car inventory, you are going to miss the lowest price in the market. But once that happens, you'll find a car and you always verify fees before you leave your house. You never get to a dealership and have fees pop up on you that you didn't know about. That means you didn't give a call and find out the bogus fees beforehand, in which case you let somebody waste your time. So you can't negotiate. That's why I got a video. Some of you may have seen it. We don't negotiate with fake fees. We don't do it. <laughs> we don't do it. It's a losing battle. All right, go ahead, Dolan. Let's keep it rolling. I'm trying to get through as many as we can today. I want to go through as many questions as fast as possible. How do I know how much equity I have on my lease? It's a very common question, y'all. I mean, we're, we're kind of getting a, a similar question asked in a different way. Call your bank, find out what you owe, what your payoff is. Go to the marketplaces that I mentioned earlier to get offers. CarMax, Vroom. I'm Vroom's out of business, sorry. Uh, CarMax, Driveway, Carvana, um, Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash Offer, uh, AutoNation, and Car Gurus buy my, uh, sell my car. That'll get you about six offers. Now, whenever you're using those websites, you get to a part where it says, is the vehicle owned, lease, or finance? Just put owned. Because their websites have something built in where they say they can't buy leases because they, they out of all the leasing companies, some have third-party restrictions and some don't. But their websites are not set up to see who has third party restrictions. They just kind of blocked it because I'm sure they had thousands and thousands of people when everybody was making all of this money calling them saying, oh, I want to sell my car to you. And then they did. the. They looked at the contract and said, oh, we can't buy it. So they basically just put a block on their website. But if you don't have a third party restriction and there are several leasing companies still that don't have a third party restriction, meaning you can sell to anyone. But if you do have a third party restriction, we take those offers that we got from those online car buyers. Then we call a local car dealership. We call a local brand and we speak to the used car manager and we get a couple offers from used car managers and we sell direct to them and we avoid any fees. We don't buy and resell. I can't think of one person. You can leave that up, Dolan. I'll get right to it. You can leave that up. I can't think of one person that has learned from me that actually bought their lease and resold it. It's just you're, you're losing thousands of dollars in taxes and fees. It's just not worth doing when you can sell direct to a dealer. Go ahead, Dolan. Next question. Let's keep it rolling. I'm loving this. Thank you. Could everybody tag a friend? Everybody's not going to tag a friend. But if, if you are somebody who tagged, I'm telling you, your friends will be upset. If they find out that they went and bought a car a couple months down the road and they end up overpaying for it, which most people are, and they find me later and you didn't share it. And they like, yo, why didn't you share that guy? Yeah, I've been following Deshaun for years. You didn't share his stuff with me. So don't be that. You don't want to have that. It's an awkward conversation. You might as well just tag a friend. Think about somebody who you love and, and share this wisdom with them. Let's get everybody saving money. All right. We can't find a lease for less than $500 a month. Every time we turn a car and they increase the lease amount. We love Jeep, but we are now trying uh trying to but it they're calling us telling us the interest rate is high we have twelve thousand miles left so i mean if you can't get a jeep so this was somebody that got a jeep in our private group um let's see hold on let me go to let me go to my uh let's see who got a jeep um i gotta label these different now that's i gotta label these different Jeeps are Jeeps have incredible deals if you know how to shop. Anybody who's interested in leasing a Jeep Grand Cherokee, which kind of Jeep is it, Liz? If it's a Jeep Grand Cherokee, let me see if I can find this. Uh, see if I can find this person because I know that that deal was ridiculous. Um, hold on. I just want to tell you how the difference in shopping and getting multiple offers because. If you already have them calling you and telling you that the every time you see, I know that that scenario where she just said every time we release from them, the price goes up. That means she's buying and leasing from the same dealer. So in most cases, when you're leasing from the same dealer, every single time you get a deal from them, they're going to bump the payment up a little bit. Very rarely is it going to go down. 
because they've conditioned you for it to go up a little bit every single time. Now, in the case of the pandemic, they had people jumping up $150 a month. But when it comes to Jeep, hold on. Hold on. What kind of Jeep? Is it a Grand Cherokee or a Wrangler? I know I have somebody in my group that just got a Jeep for, it, they saved like $7,000. And that was on a limited. That was on like a $59,000 Jeep. Um, oh, that's right. I text I text my friend the deal because she was shopping for a Jeep and I text her the deal. So let me actually see. Here we go. Um, oh, right, here we go. That's right. Okay. She got a $45,000 uh, Jeep Grand Chair. If y'all can't see this, this is... Raphael, she got a $45,000. Now, I don't know how you're equipping your Jeep, but hers is $45,925. She's paying $549 a month, and that's all the money she gave them. She's paid, she put $540, she gave them $549, and she, drive, she drove off. So if you are somebody who says, all right, that deal is ridiculous. I'm going to put down $1,500 more, drop my payment to like four. Actually, yeah, probably about $1,500 more out of pocket. We'll drop that payment to probably $498. And you're at, you're, you're, and, or you might say, Deshaun, I don't even need the limited. I see she got the blacked out one. I, I don't need all of that. I'll take one that's a little less than that. But this was, uh, this was last month. So, I mean, you must shop offers on these cards. You must shop multiple offers. You must get at least five quotes from five unrelated dealers because one thing that will surprise you is Raphael had offers for 600, 700. I remember I helped the lady, Christina. She was in our group a year ago and her best offer, she got like a 50, she got like a $52,000 Jeep white with the black top. And it was like uh 606 a month. But her highest offer she got from a dealer was like eleven hundred. So she had some for eleven hundred. She had some for like eight ninety nine or something. And then her best one was six oh six. So oftentimes what you think is overpriced is just that one dealer you're dealing with that's trying to take a shot at you. That's why multiple offers from home is the way to go. This is what's in my book. This is what I teach in my videos. If you guys want to have it right in one spot with all my scripts, everything you want to, I don't even want you talking. I really want you typing because when you talk, you can say something wrong. If you type, you can't mess up. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. If you type, you can't mess up. So 75% off. I just put the book out. It's called car shopping for people that hate car shopping. If you hate car shopping, type hate. Tape type, I hate it. <laughs> All right. And and uh that it's we're already rated five stars on Goodreads. Um, and I want y'all to have everything I teach in one spot. That way you don't have to go through all my videos trying to see which one's for me and which one's for leasing and which one's for selling my lease. And oh, this one's for a used car. I don't need that. That's you you can do that. You can certainly do that. The information's there. But if you want it all in one spot, get your book for 75% off in my TikTok bio or go to my Instagram bio, click that link, and then click the button that says 75% off, or go to Deshaun'sBook.com. All right, go ahead. I want to buy, go ahead. Yep, you good, Dolan. I want to buy a certified pre-owned car. I want a safe, reliable car. What do you recommend? I'm, th I'm thinking Subaru. Okay, so when we're trying to find what car we want, get an idea of it, and then we do a research. We do our check. We check to see reliability. There's three terms that you got to be familiar with. Two are going to apply to you, if you're a short-term person, which means you're leasing, you're not keeping your cars eight years, and two are going to be important to you if you're a purchaser, if, you, if you're buying a car to keep eight, nine, ten years. If you're leasing, the, most two, the two important terms are initial quality. Initial quality is what does the data say about this car its first 90 days? The first 90 days the car was in production. Now, the way we do an initial quality check, this we do right before we go and get off offers on a car because we never get offers on a car until we find out if it's a good car. You don't want to be getting offers and then you get a great deal. Now you decide to check to see if it's a good car and you're like, oh, it has electrical problem. No. So this is the one of the last steps we do. We do this in step four of my process. It's a seven step process. 
forced forced the uh, step four is shopping not buying that's our research that's our test drives that's our making sure the car is good so you type in the name of the car the year always put the year 2024 subaru impreza initial quality type that into google and you look at the first pit uh, first page if there's any red flags you'll see it skim those first couple articles you don't it shouldn't take you more than three minutes You'll see, oh, click on this. Reliability score is a 70, 70 out of 100. Uh, I might pass on that. Initial quality, rather, is a, is a 7 out of 100. We don't want to see anything that gives us concern. Now, once it passes initial quality, now you type in 2024 Subaru Impreza um, uh, um, reliability. So initial quality is your first three months of the vehicle's lifespan from the time it's new reliability is the first three years so if that if that car is in the shop every couple months or once a year or for the same issue if it's having a misfire in the engine you'll see it in the reliability uh, ratings for somebody like you tina you want to look at both the reliability and then you want to type in 2024 whatever year you're buying 2021 subaru impreza longevity and you want to do the same thing You'll see if the transmission's known to go, it'll say, it'll tell you right up top. These cars are known to last 150 to 200,000 miles, 200,000 to 300,000 miles. These cars, many owners report transmission issues around 80,000 miles. That quick, that quick five minute check will avoid thousands and thousands of dollars in bills and headaches. Thank you, Bluff said you're looking younger. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> so that's how you do. But also, don't don't think you got to buy it. You can keep that up, Dolan. All right, we're pulling questions from everywhere, Instagram, TikTok. So make sure y'all are typing your questions. We're on four platforms. And I got my man Dolan pulling the questions in. Don't think that a certified pre-owned car is better than a non-certified car with a good history. A good history, non-certified, is actually could be better than a car that's certified without the history. See, I'd rather a non-certified car with a great title, which means it's not a salvage style, it's not a rental, it's not a you know funny title. Great service records, which means I can see that the previous owner or owners regularly took care of the car. That's the biggest indicator that you that 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 car was taken care of is service records. And then a good accident report. I take that over a not uh, over a certified car when I pull the car facts. I don't see many um, service records. So don't think it's because you're getting a certified car. If you don't do your due diligence, you could you could you could still lose. You want to look for those three things: title, service records, accident history. That's the biggest indicators. It's no guarantees, but those are the those are the indicators. All right, go ahead, Dolan. Next question. Can you explain the worksheet on the multiple marketplace strategy? I signed up for the five sites, but confused when there are multiple cars on each site. If I pick high and low on each site, the sheet will have like 50 cars. Correct. Correct. I'm looking to actually narrow down. First thing we do. So this is somebody who obviously has my book and she's asking about this strategy. So look, when we're on, when we're looking at used cars, we're on every marketplace. So I want you to think about like Amazon.com, Walmart.com. Let's replace the car with a TV. It's no way if you're looking for a TV and you're trying to get your best deal and pay the lowest price, you're not going to check all the online websites. Now, some people might check only Amazon. Though that's not uh, that's not as good as checking Amazon and checking um, Walmart.com and checking BestBuy.com. See, even I look, I know Best Buy is overpriced most of the time. You get what I'm saying? But uh, that's how I feel about CarMax. But I still got to check them because they're overpriced most of the time, not all the time. And every now and then, you see the one that was surprised and they'll, give, they'll have the best offer right there. So that's why I'm always going to check all the marketplaces, CarMax, Driveway, and then we're going to open up uh, um, AutoTrader, Cars.com, CarGurus, um, at Carfax.com. There's eight used car marketplaces. So we open them up and now we put in our criteria. What are we looking for? Now, we don't look to buy. I don't want you buying the first day. 
when you open those marketplaces. Here's the goal when we open the marketplaces. Who remembers what I said about market value? If you were on the last, if you were on the last broadcast, or if you heard me talk about it, what are we interested in when it comes to market value? Who remembers? And let me see. We might have a whole fresh crowd on here. We got a couple hundred people. We got like 400 people on here between all the platforms. So let I don't want to assume, but let's see if anybody has heard from any of my other broadcasts. When it comes to market value, what are we interested in? All right. We might have a whole fresh crowd. Below market. Below market value, y'all. So how do we buy below market value? First thing we need to do is see what is market value. Yep. I see you, Ronald. The first thing we need to do is see what is market value. So your goal when you open up those marketplaces, and this is what I teach you in my book. First things first, let's sort for, we sort all our prices high to low. We create accounts because we want to be alerted of any new inventory. Because once I know what the market value is, I know where the low side of the market is. So you might look and say, we sort all the prices, low to high, low to high, low to high. Now I can see all the low prices are around 22, 23, 20, you know, 22, 23, 24. Like, but then it goes up to 25, 26, 27. That's market value, that middle. And then you got the over market. You got the, it's always going to be cars that are priced higher, above market value. Now, when we look at the low side, here's what we're able to say. Here's what you have to know. Be prepared for it. The low side of the market is where all the crap is. So you're going to see bad titles. You're going to see accidents. You're going to see frame damage. That's fine because you're looking through all of that. And then you're going to find that diamond and you know what the low side of the market is. Here's what's also very important. You might see a car. You might say, I want a black car or a white or silver. You see a car that has all the boxes I talked about, which we checked. Title, great. Service records, great. Accidents, great. It's the wrong color, though. Dag, I don't want blue. That's an indicator. I don't care if it's blue. I'm not going to buy it because it's not my color, but it's showing me where the low side of the market is. That's a deal. If somebody wanted a navy blue car, that's a daggone below market deal. So we have to find out what the market is. Then we find out where the low side of the market is. And then we have on alert so that every car that pops up, it comes to our email immediately. As soon as they list it, boom, we get the email and we know the low side of the market. So when we look at that car and we're like, oh, wait, this is $22,000 and it's my color. All right, you open it. Ah, shoot, two accidents. No problem. Now you get another one a couple of days later. Oh, shoot, all right, black. Oh, 22.5. Good price. You open that thing. Wait, service records look great. Now we go to verify the, if there are any bogus fees. We do one more step. We pull the window sticker because I want to know what's in that car. I want to know what the original equipment of what is the actual original price. Once I find that out, I got to get there and get that car. So that's how you do it. You have to, you, you, it's a it's a, it's a, a narrowing down. You're looking at all this inventory. I'm going to narrow it down to the best and then I'm going to, I'm going to snag my deal. And, and you're, and you're at home. You're not in these dealers where you're at home. Okay. And that's all in the book. All right, let's go. Oh, how do I get your book? It's in my TikTok bio. Welcome to all the new people that jumped on the broadcast. It's in my TikTok bio. It's in my Instagram bio. Click the picture of me. And then you'll see a website there. And then there, it click the button. You won't leave the broadcast. So some people are like, Sean, I don't want to get the book yet. I don't want to, I don't want to miss the broadcast. Well, the book is only on sale 75% off for 30 minutes. So click the link. You won't leave. You'll still be able to hear everything we're talking about. You can come back and keep asking questions, but don't miss the 75% off. Click that website. Or if you're on Facebook or Instagram, you can go to Deshaun'sbook.com or you can uh, scan the QR code if you're watching on TV. Go ahead, Dolan. Oh, matter of fact, let me go to TikTok because Dolan, you're not on TikTok. Can you come with me to buy a car? Not necessary, Danielle. Thank you. I appreciate it, though. Listen, that's the old way. So you think that, see, you think that we're somehow going back and forth with dealers and you, hey, I kind of need somebody. That's like when I was selling cars and people thought bringing their uncle in was going to help them. No, we don't shop like that. So you don't need any. The reason why, listen, I'm going to share, uh, 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 
I'm going to share the reason why you see people like this. Who? Well, I just showed you. Raphael. These get, how she get that deal? She's she's from home. See, you put yourself in a vulnerable position where you go in. Some of you, I mean, be honest. If you ever felt like, you know, you were being taken advantage of or you were getting talked down to at a dealership, you know, type of, um, you know, type of, type of one. If you feel like, you know, I'm outmatched or if you're not a good negotiator, how about that? Who, who on here is not a good negotiator? Type, type, of, type of one in the chat. All of these things I want to, I want you to know. That's why the old way has worked for dealers. I was there for 14 years. It's all about psychology and negotiation and confrontation and being comfortable with confrontation, which most car salespeople are. Most people, unless you're like in that business, you're not. So you want to get it over with as quick as possible. Someone who's fighting for their money doesn't mind being uncomfortable with you for an hour or two hours or a couple of days or weeks. So you have to now take away that power, put yourself in a different position where you're in control. And that's in your house. That's why you don't need me. You need what if you use what I teach, if you do it your old way, then, yeah, you need somebody. And you probably you're still not going to get your best offer because your best offer comes from shopping multiple dealers. But once you start shopping multiple dealers, you'll see they'll be jumping through hoops and you'll feel like, dang, I got the power now. That's the name of the game. Go ahead, I'm going to do another one from TikTok because I know Dolan, you're not pulling. We'll get back to IG. We got all questions coming from everywhere. I just don't want to leave TikTok out. Would you recommend buying a car outright, cash, no note? Uh, yeah, we talked about that in the last hour. If you're if you're not invested, if you're not investing your money and the bank's money, if, if the bank, look, it depends on if you're investing your money. If you're in and you're making money on your money, those people don't usually put their cash in cars. They want to keep their money making money. But if you're not really investing, then you probably want to just pay cash, get the transaction out the way. Um, and if you're investing your money and you can use the bank's money at a low interest, you have to always check if the car you're shopping for has a low interest rate on it, y'all. Some of these cars have 0%, 0.99%. This is like a finance rebate. It's like a, it's like the bank saying, here, use our money for free and we will let like, you, you, you know, you cannot compete. It's no point in going to your credit union. No one can beat it. 0.99%, 1.99. When you can use the bank's money that cheap, you can keep your money making money and you can keep your money in your bank account. A lot of times in this economy, people want to have their money available. So it's up to, it's all personal though. If you notice, unless we talk about leasing or buying, I'm not really going to say something you did was wrong because it's more about, it's a case by case basis. I'm more about, let me show you the options based on different people and you pick who you are and you do that. The only thing that I'll tell somebody in a lot of cases they're wrong, almost all, is the leasing versus buying scenario all day. All right, go ahead, Dolan. Next question, bringing in from either Instagram, TikTok, somewhere. I mean, oh, uh, all right, um, Tina, I, I want to buy a car and pay it in full, but don't want them to take advantage of me because if it is. Okay, that's kind of a similar question, Tina. We've been talking about that like the whole broadcast. So, you know, you know, like that's how to shop is kind of what we're talking about. So it's, I, I don't, I let's, let's go to the next one and just, you know, stay on the broadcast. The continual theme is nobody on here who's using what they learn from me, what they're learning in this live, what I have on my videos, what's in my book. No one should be worried about being taken advantage of because you're not shopping the old way anymore. Alejandro, I have equity in my current lease. If I want to purchase the vehicle, could the dealer subtract that equity from the purchase price on the lease contract if I decide to buy it? No. Um, if you, you're, you, you, what is you? How do you know you have equity? Your equity is based on someone offering to buy the vehicle from you. So if somebody, if you, you listen, equity is based on offers, offers, nothing else. Kelly's Blue Book telling you your car is worth twenty grand is not an offer. Kelly's Blue Book Instant Cash offer where they actually have a local dealer or a couple local dealers who will make you an offer. Cash, come pick up. Hey, bring your car in. We'll give you a check. That's that's how you assess equity. We do this in step two. Before Once we decide whether we're leasing versus buying, which is the foundation of our car deal, 
You can't get a great deal if you purchase, but you should at least. Can't get a great deal. It's over. You're on the wrong foundation. You can't get a great deal if you leased and you should have purchased because the long-term wins you would have gotten, you now lose. Once you move past that, your next step is equity assessment. Look at my current car. If I had now, some of you, Deshaun, I don't have a current car, then you skip it. But if you have a current car, a lease, or a car you own, or a car you're, you're paying for, you're, you're financing, equity assessment, which means I'm going to call my bank and I'm going to get, I'm going to find out what my payoff is. Then I'm going to go to the actual online buyers and get offers. And then I'm going to see are my offers, is my highest offer higher than my payoff? That's equity. But there's no other way. So if you were to purchase that vehicle, no one can take your equity because you know this is what my car would have sold for, but I'm going to buy it for the price they say I could buy it for. So if that's 4000 less, great. But also be aware, not everyone is willing to pay you that. That was just one buyer who beat everybody else. So you 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 know that's why I'm not into buying leases. Because I'm not into buying your car because all you're doing when you're buying your lease is buying a used car. That's it. That's all you're doing. All right. Um, hold on. Uh, I'm 20,000 miles over on my lease. Should I get a new lease or purchase my current vehicle? All right. This is very important, y'all. Watch this. I'm, I'm about to save. Look, y'all know I get excited about saving you money. If you listen. You're going to be writing me and talking and telling me for years about all the money that you save. This is a big warning. When it comes to purchasing leases that are over mileage, some of you, in an effort to avoid a $2,500 mileage penalty, that was, that was your fault. Okay? I'm not going to beat you up. But you drove the mileage. You contracted for this mileage. You drove more. That could happen through negligence or it could happen through a real lifestyle change. I used to work 10 minutes from home. Now I work 40 minutes from home. It happens. And it doesn't matter. We're going to pay for what we use. It's okay. Especially if you got a great lease deal. I'll pay for what I use. But here's the math about this. Going over your lease mileage is never a reason to buy your vehicle. Here's why. From the day you buy your from the day you lease a vehicle, they tell you your lease, you could buy it. The, 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 the purchase value, the residual value at the end is let's say 18,000. Let's just say that. Most times throughout history, the car wasn't worth that. When you finished with that lease, the car wasn't worth that. Deshaun, what do you mean the car wasn't worth that? A comparable used car. Similar, same year, similar mileage, you could have found for less. That was throughout history. So we never purchase leases without finding out, is the purchase price that they're even offering me, if I had the right mileage, forget, we ain't talking about going over yet. If I had the right mileage, was that a good price? Many times it was not. Now, when you go over the mileage by 20,000 miles, does the purchase price change? Do they give you a new purchase price because you went 20,000 miles over? Do they say, hey, you know what? It was 18, but because you put all those miles on it, it ain't worth 18 no more. You don't care. We'll give it to you for 15. They don't do that, which means you are actually overpaying because you're paying the same price that they said you should, if you if your car had 36,000 miles, you could buy it for 18. Your car got 56,000 miles and you're about to go pay 18. That's why going over mileage is never a reason to buy your lease. It's even more reason not to. The car, it makes the car, it makes the car even more not worth what that buyout price is. So the best thing for you to do is to assess the penalty. First thing to do is see, you're going to compare three things. Can I sell this car using the equity assessment? We talked about that. Either watch the replay, get my book at 75% off in my Instagram bio, go to step two, which is the equity assessment. Get my book in, my, in the TikTok bio, click the link, 
and get it for 75% off. It's normally $97. You could be reading it in a matter of minutes. And then what you do is you go to day two and you do the equity assessment and you see, all right, how much could I sell this for? If I'm going to lose, now I got to see what's the smallest loss I could take. Now, you might be able to sell it to a buyer. Let's say CarMax wants to buy it. They win the bid. And you might only have to you, you might only have to come up with a thousand dollars. I'm just making a number up. Sell it to them, pay the difference. It's better than a, a mileage penalty, it's better than a penalty you're gonna hit. Now, second scenario is you actually see if I was to replace the car now, what's the mileage penalty and the payment penalty? Because what most people don't understand is you have payments remaining. And some of them, so it's so many lies that's been told. I feel bad for y'all because you don't know from which angle is what. Because somebody like, somebody you might said, oh, well, I went in with, I had three payments left. I had six payments left and the dealership took care of them. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. And 99% of the cases, those six payments you had got rolled over to the next car deal. So those payments didn't disappear. So what you're going to do is you're going to compare. If I sell the car to the highest bidder, what's my penalty? Or maybe I went over on my Jeep mileage. This was back when the market was real high. I was over about 6,000 miles, and I still sold my Jeep for $8,900. Again, everything in the world, every car in the United States was worth seven to 15 grand more. So just because you're over miles don't mean you can't sell that car and close the gap. Second thing you want to compare is if I get out now, what would the mileage and payment penalty be? Third thing is, if I just drive and go to the end, what would the mileage penalty be without the payments? Because if you got three payments left of $500, you got your mileage penalty and you got $500 in pay, $1,500 in payments to account for. So this all is structure. Very important. This is why some people say, Deshaun, like, man, you, 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 uh, I had a girl say, listen, you make things complex. This is a girl that I actually, y'all remember, I don't know if some people's on here. She she gave a horrible advice about leasing and we actually, we featured her on the show. I don't know if she ended up seeing the video or not, but she wasn't too happy. Naturally, I wasn't attacking her personally. I was just attacking what she was saying about leasing. Her video was, was, was incorrect. And she said, you know, you make things a little complex. She's a car saleswoman. She's in the business. And I said, listen, You've been taught, young lady, that this thing is supposed to be this simple. Why do you think people out here and they hate it? It's simple, but 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 you're losing money. See, if you just take it a little more serious, I don't need you to treat it like a house purchase, but it's the second most expensive purchase behind a house. Let's treat it like that and you'll save the money. But you, if you're not willing to treat this Every time you purchase a car, you should be treating it like a small house. I'm going I'm to take this finances seriously. I'm going I'm to have me a strategy. I want to make sure I keep the most money possible. And when it comes to leasing, you must structure your lease right, or you're not going to enjoy leasing and you're going to have these penalties that you shouldn't have had unless you had a lifestyle change. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dolan. Let's keep the questions rolling. I had a few on TikTok. And what you're going to find is somebody's going to ask the same question you have. So even if, if if I don't ask you, literally some of you are going to be like, oh, that's the same question I had. All right. So is it true if you end your lease early by having a dealer buy out your car because they need inventory, you always lose? No. If you if somebody buys your car, that's a clean transaction. Just make sure that you know what you're going to walk with. No, you could sell your car a year into the lease. If you do your equity assessment and you see, man, I could get out or I could break even. Clean transaction. There's no losing in that. Unless you put a bunch of money down, which is why we tip. If you put four, five, six grand down on your lease because you wanted to lower that payment to a comfortable zone, then you you, you don't really want to end that lease early. Um, all right. Uh, YouTube. Do you think there's another shift in the car in the new car market that will bring the price back down to a normal? Um, I'm sorry to tell you, prices is great. Felicia, when you when it's just they're not good for you. You gotta you you gotta get you gotta get your skills up. I'm gonna show you something. <laughs> I was helping 
my my I have a car buying school. So as my book, I have a video school where I coach people around the country. I started that school because people were out here getting killed in 2021. November 2021, I opened the school, online school. Felicia was our first graduate, middle of the pandemic, January. She got a BMW X1. She saved $1,950 off the price, a $1,950 discount. And that was the first indicator that I don't believe what the heck going on out there. Now, for the for those of you who, if you if you just if you use what I'm teaching you, deals are everywhere. Deals are everywhere. Look, look at what I'm showing you. You saw Greg, fifty six thousand dollar vehicle. His lease payment is five twenty seven a month. Look at the date. Look, look at Tope, twenty twenty three BMW, fifty four thousand dollar vehicle, six ninety a month. Look, um, look, look at Danielle. Look at the date. Do, do, look, uh, forty-four thousand dollar Audi, five fifty a month. I hadn't seen. Look, um, look, two thousand eighty-six dollars discount on a on a um, Toyota Camry. We've been making deals. If anybody's out, you, you, look. If you're gonna be in my world, and I do want you in my world, don't believe what people. There's two things you don't believe. Don't believe what one dealer says and don't believe what anyone says about deals because they'll tell you, oh, it's so, it's so hard out there. Now, you don't realize here's a bad thing about that. You don't realize when you go into dealers shopping that way with that energy, they hear all of that. Hey, man, you know, man, everything's so overpriced. They're going to use that against you. Yeah, man, I just came from a dealer, man. You know, I was look, I got a quote on that car, man. It was too expensive. Well, how much did they quote you? Man, they said it was like 700 a month. Oh, really? Now I might know you. Now the best deal in that car might be five, but you might have walked into a dealer who like, man, what, what if I could say you a little more than that? See, the words you're saying, you don't realize how they're hurting you. That's why you use my stuff, you don't even talk. You don't talk to salespeople. See, I had to set this up in a way it's truly online because the more you talk, if you not, you like to shine. I don't even know I'm saying stuff that's hurting me. I know you don't. But that's my job to tell you. I was in the car business for 14 years. The information that you are going in, the energy you're going in saying, oh, man, I need a car this week. <sighs> hurting you. Desperate vibes. Can't say no for long. Maybe you could say no today, but not for long. That's all the stuff you tell. That's what car salespeople are trained for. They're trained to pick up those, those little words you say that you think are harmless. Man, I've been shopping for, for, for a week. All of this stuff is hurting you. And so when you stop talking and just sit at your computer and do the things that I'm telling you to do, you're going to find out. Deals are everywhere and nobody's and, and you're in control. But if you're going in there thinking you could actually negotiate or say or just get a car deal the old way, mm -mm. everything's going to seem overpriced. So R.A. Cave, I'm sorry to tell you, deals been out here, man. For those who know how to get deals, they're everywhere. For those who don't know how to get deals, they're nowhere. Go ahead, Dolan. Yeah, I agree. Let's go to TikTok again. Hold on. We're going to keep TikTok. 2024, Ed, looking to trade in for 2024 Explorer. So here's the thing. You're trading in, in a deep depreciation cycle. You've lost a ton of money in depreciation. You're still in the deepest depreciation cycle, which is that first one to six years. You're losing 20% the first year, 15%, and then you're looking to trade it in. You should be leasing. So if you're willing to hear more about that, I can't help you do something the wrong way because you're going to look at me in three years and say, yeah, I bought the car. Now I'm looking to trade that in. Dag, Deshaun, why it seem like I have so much negative equity? You have negative equity because you're a short term person. You're not keeping your cars eight years. You're not outliving the depreciation cycle, but yet you're not getting aggressive leases. So you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars to purchase these cars. You're losing it when you resell them back to the dealership. And then you're doing it all over again, over and over again. Meanwhile, somebody who's leasing these same vehicles, a Ford Edge, they were probably paying 400 a month, no money down. 
you you've paid thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars into that Ford Edge. Now you're looking to try to get that back and do it again with a Ford Explorer. Person, you should be leasing these cars. If you're not buying your cars to keep pay them off and outlive that depreciation, which is going to be heavy the first six, seven years. I have something in my book and everything in my videos. I call it the eight year rule. If you're not buying a car to get to that stage, that level of ownership, you should not be shopping for purchases. You should be shopping for aggressive leases. And then you're going to see, wow, now that my deal is on the right foundation, I'm actually saving thousands and thousands. You'll be able to see it. I don't think there's anything more uh, liberating than a person who's been purchasing for years, putting all this money into these cars, who turns out and, and who turns around and starts leasing. Like you're going to see all that money you were putting in the cars in your bank account now. And you're, you're, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to be amazed. Um, when should I look for a vehicle before leaving a job or after starting a new one? Um, if it's the same, yeah, probably before leaving a job, if you're going to look to get a loan for it, go ahead, Dolan, shoot the next question in TikTok, Instagram. Uh, I'm sorry, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, send it in. All right. Facebook, my lease is due in December. I don't understand how to sell the lease. Just watch that part over, Peggy. I don't want to continue because there's people who've been on here. I don't want to uh, listen. I know that it's there's only about 25 questions, 30 questions total that all of you could have. That's why you could sit on the broadcast and you could benefit because someone else is going to ask the same question you have. But what I can't do is answer the same questions over and over again because now I'm just doing a disservice to the people who've been on. So what I would tell you is. Watch the wherever platform you're on. As soon as we end the show, we post the replay. So watch the replay and get the actual and, and, and get that part of the strategy. Because I want to make sure the show's quality. I want people listening saying that he answered that question three times. OK, go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one in. Uh, looking at buying a new car that's just that just got redesigned. OK, should I wait to see how the new model rates before buying? Definitely. Oh, if you that's a great question. Who's heard that you should not buy a car the first year it comes out? If you've heard that you should not buy a car the first year it comes out, type of me in the comments. Y'all killing the likes on TikTok. Thank you so much. Y'all just keep tapping the screen as you come in. If you got time, every couple minutes, just throw some taps in there. Keep shooting those likes up. I appreciate everybody who's, who's uh, doing that. And I appreciate all the sharers. All right. So you see, got a bunch of people from every platform. Who's heard? Look, he's speaking facts. Make sure y'all lock in and invest in his resources. I appreciate you. Thank you, Linda. So now a car being redesigned. Thank you. Thank you, LA. A car being redesigned is not the same as new engine, new transmission, new steering system. Redesign could be the same components, in which case, Janine, I'm not worried about a car that's been redesigned that has the same components. But if it has new technology, new things they're exper experimenting with. Certainly, you might want to give it a year before you actually be, you don't want to be the you don't want to be the guinea pig. You don't want to be the guinea pig because you're rolling the dice could be great, could be horrible. OK, great question. Go ahead. Next question, Dolan. Welcome to all the new people. If y'all don't know, this is Car Shopping Secrets. This is what I'm thinking about calling this show because it's it's really the things I teach aren't secrets, but they're not they're not well known. And I would say I pr I probably only know half of them because of being inside the car business. So I guess those would be secrets. And then the other half are 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 just really learning finance and learning numbers and learning you know, the, the numbers. So that those are not necessarily secrets, but yeah, um, I'm doing this live show and I will always, for the, for the, for the time period, we're promoting my new book. So my new book is a digital book. It's called car shopping for people that hate car shopping. So if you're like Deshaun, that's me, then this book is for you. Seven steps It's called seven steps to saving time, money, and avoiding dealerships. It's a digital book because I'm going to update it every time I need to. For instance, y'all used to hear some of you may know in my videos, one of the people who used to bid on our cars was Room. One of the people who used to be a marketplace we would shop with is Room. Room went out of business a few months ago. I had to have a di with a digital book. All I did, we went in, me and my team, we snatched Room out, boom, 
everybody who had the book didn't have to go there and say, Dag, Deshaun, you sending us the room and, you know, they're out of business. We updated it. The file got updated and we're able to keep it fresh. That's why the um, that's why the digital book is the way to go. So but I'm doing 75 percent off as part of our official launch. Um, and so it's normally $97. You can go to my TikTok bio and click that website. You won't leave the broadcast. You won't leave the show. Same thing on Instagram. My Instagram bio, you won't leave the show. Get your book. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, you can go to Deshaun'sBook.com or you can scan the QR code and uh, and get your 75% off. But you'll see there's a timer. Once that 30 minutes is over, book goes back to $97. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot the next one in. All right. This is IG, Instagram. Should you buy extended coverage on a used car? Great question. So if the car has, listen, Diva asks, should you purchase an extended warranty when you buy a used car? Now, this goes for used for a new car, too. Even though you have a warranty when you buy a new car, some people like to extend it if they're going to keep it. Um, you know, if you're going to keep it seven, eight, I'm sorry, it's not seven. If you're going to keep it eight to 10 years, some people tend to buy it. A warranty even longer than the than the factory. It depends on how expensive the car is to maintain. I'm sorry, when something breaks. When something breaks, how expensive is it to fix? And how likely is it that something is going to break? So if you use that test I told you all about earlier in the show, where we go to Google and we do our quality check on the car, one of the steps we do to make sure we get it, to decide if we're going to get an extended warranty is we type in the year, the make, the model, repair cost. That's also in the book. We do this in day six because this is in the paperwork and protection step. If you see that your vehicle is high on the expense list in terms of when something goes wrong, it's expensive to fix, then the warranty is usually a great investment. But you want to get it from a dealership. Call a couple, get a price from the one that you're you're shopping with, get a price from a couple of local dealers just to make sure that they're not overcharging you for it. But if you see your car is very low on the repair list of expense and the likelihood of things going wrong, like it's 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 not a car that's known for things to go wrong. And when it does go wrong, it's not expensive then a warranty is not going to really pay for itself. You go spend three grand on a warranty, you're probably not going to get that money back in the claims you put in. So it, it has everything to do. That's what you do to decide whether a warranty is worth it or not. You must know if this is a Mercedes Benz and when something breaks, it's $2,000 or it's $1,000 minimum, then yeah, I'm going to get that extended warranty from a dealership, not from any of these side companies that go out of business every year all right go ahead dolan shoot the next one in all right keep typing your questions y'all we on here for a couple more minutes all right yeah i'm loving this and listen and we want to keep the show fast paced we we our goal is to make sure that every time we do a show now y'all gonna see a certain things that i want to go deep with on it i'm gonna do something soon called uh where i show y'all like this this uh it's a couple subjects that y'all see when when we do a show it's, you're going to be like, oh, great. This ain't the time for questions. This is the time for me to just sit here and look at this. And I'll be asking y'all questions because y'all going to be participating. But if we're doing straight up Q&A like this, we want to get through as many as possible. Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot it up. Deshaun, can you just go with me? All right, Dolan, you playing. Why you put that question up? Go ahead. Next question, Dolan. <laughs> Crystal, you didn't see somebody ask that same question. And what I said was when you learn to shop from home, you don't need anyone with you. That's like saying, Deshaun, can you come to my house and teach me to shop from home? We shop from home. And we don't spend more than 30 minutes in a car dealership. This stuff sounds, if you just jumped on the broadcast and you don't know me, you haven't used my stuff before, it sounds crazy. Deshaun, how are you getting your best offer? But we have thousands of people doing it. You are, you're, they're using my system for shopping on home. The things I'm talking about in this live, the things I talk about in my social media videos, they took it and they're using it. The things that's in my book, they're using it. They're not deviating from it because it's an oil and water. My system and the way I'm teaching you all to shop is no nothing like the old way you've been shopping. It is oil and water. You can't mix them. 
You're either going to do it my way and try it and then say, Deshaun, I love your way. I'm never doing it any other way. Or you're going to do it that old way and try to mix little things from my system, which is still the old way. So when I say follow it to the T, you're going to win following it to the T. And in which case you don't need anyone with you because you're at home and you're making your deals before you ever leave your house, whether you're leasing, purchasing, getting a new car, used car, that deal is made before you ever leave. If you're going to see a used car, you're not going there hoping to get money off. Now we do ask for a couple hundred off when we're there, but we don't do, but we, we don't leave our house unless we know it's already the lowest deal in the market. So even if they say no, after I test drive that used car, he, he might say, listen, I'm going to be honest with you. And, and, and when you got the lowest deal in the market, you've got honest people. So you get out there and you're like, hey, listen, I love the car. I just test drove it. I'm ready to make a deal. You know, take off another $750. And, and again, you don't get obnoxious because when you know the market, see, when you don't know the market, you insult the lowest price people. And you don't know because you think there's always more. Oh, it doesn't matter if he's the lowest in the market. There's more. There's more. And it's listen. And you end up walking away from the best deal in the market. But when you know the market, like you're going to know using this, using what we talked about, you get out there, you say, listen, it's another $750. I'll take it right now. Listen, I'm going to be honest with you. I got that car price to sell. It's the lowest in the market. And you're going to say, yeah, I know. <laughs> let's go. And sometimes they'll say, listen, just because you came out so quick. And a lot of times they'll say, look, I just posted it too. See, because remember what I told y'all earlier about the alerts we get. So a lot of times we're one of the first ones seeing the car and it hasn't had a chance to have a lot of people see it yet. But you get out there, you ask for another $750. Maybe they split it with you. You win. If they don't, if they're like, man, listen, it's the lowest price in the market. I know it is. You don't know. Dealers use a tool called uh, V Auto, so they know when their used car is the lowest price in the market. So, and, and if they say, "Look, I don't have any more money to give you," no problem. Let's go. You got a deal. It is the lowest price in the market. I just wanted to ask. You know, either way, we win. But that's the only time we're talking about numbers is on a used car, and we before we ever get there, we already know it's a deal. You get what I'm saying? Go ahead, Dolan. Shoot it up. All right. This is Facebook. I'm on my third Land Rover lease and it's ending August, um, August at the 39th of the month. I'm guessing you meant 29th. I purchased your book and briefly read it and learned I could sell it to CarMax being the most equity back. OK, perfect. Following the steps. I have 12,000 miles per year. Thank you for purchasing the book, by the way, Crystal. I love it. Um, I have 12,000 miles per year and I'm currently at 28,000. Great. I will call Chase Land Rover. Chase doesn't have a third party restriction unless they changed it. Don't quote me, but Mazda's leases are done through Chase and I've helped so many people sell my, my, my mother. My mother had a Mazda lease, my wife's best friend. We So if Chase still doesn't have a third party restriction and you can literally just cash out, you don't have to take third party restriction um, part of the book that I say, go ahead, I'm gonna keep reading um, to see if I have end of the lease clause. Uh, but if I don't, how do I sell the car match without being dishonest about owning it? That's fine. There you, you won't, all you do is call them and set the appointment. They're going to, they're going to do all the details. They don't expect people to know what you know. They don't expect people to know the difference between a third party restriction and a lease that doesn't have one. So they're, they're working with, unfortunately, they're working with unaware buyers. So most of the time, they don't want to waste their their time. But when you set your appointment up with CarMax and you tell them there's no third party restriction, they'll, they'll, you'll, you'll be fine. Now, what you're going to have to do is if you want to replace it, Crystal, you're going to move into the next step of the book, which is shopping for your lease, because you're now going to time your transactions. You're not going to just go sell a CarMax unless you can you can drop you can you, you have a backup car. You don't need a car right away. Some of you, you like to shine. I need to sell my old car and I need the new car the same day or, you know, that's fine. I teach you in the book how to time the transaction. 